Yeah, sure. I, again, uh, for people that are here for the very first time, what we try and do uh, when I'm at the shows, when I'm at the convention, sometimes I get up on stage and I just gab for an hour. And then maybe in the last 10 minutes, we uh, ask questions. But um, I usually like on these ones here to sort of let people get in line and ask as many questions as possible. They usually end up pointing me in the direction of topics I was going to talk about on my own anyways. And if I think we're missing anything, I'll just uh, sneak it in in between uh, questions up there. So uh, there's no, let me also say, I've said many a time that there's there's no bad question because if it's important enough for you to ask, then it's important enough for me to answer. So um, anyways, I'm, I, I'm, I'll take any and all comers, if you will. So, Awesome. Well, we got our first uh, guest up on stage. She spawn. Take the floor. She's one. Oh, that's an OG. That's one of the OGs. All going way, all the way back. Uh, yep, going back to the first day of the server. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, I I have a, a couple of questions related to Odd Key, so I want it to kind of get on here first and let the fun questions come later. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and then and then I'm going to interrupt you just for one minute, um, uh, Rem. I'm going to let you or Jake, I'm going to let you guys be the bad guy. Uh, let's see if we can limit uh, everybody past she, she spawn because uh, he's the first one up. But everybody, uh, like, give me your best one question and then mm -hmm. move on because it's too easy to get to two or three of the same person. I'd rather yes, get, sir. To as many, get to as many people as I can. Again, it won't take get to everybody. They can get back in line a little bit later, but uh, I want to make sure that anybody who's got a question that we're at least making an attempt to get to them. Yeah, let's keep it to one question because we got the most people we've ever had raising their hands tonight. Okay. So except for except for sheep, sheep want because he's the first one up. So the first one gets a bonus question. So can I, can I please uh, give the announcement pretty quick in Spanish, sir? <laughs> uh, so there's, I'd say we don't need to really translate everything. You might want to just oh, type okay. out in, uh, in Espanol chat and let them know so we don't uh, clog up the stage. Okay. Sure, yeah. we will. We... Yeah, okay. just, type, just type it out. Go ahead, Chispon. Okay. Uh, my first question, uh, earlier, I guess in the last two weeks, Steve Aoki has actually added an odd key section to his Discord. Uh, we haven't seen anything from Steve in, gosh, months and months. Uh, I, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about where he stands on the project. Is he still in or is he out or why have we not heard from him? I, uh, again, uh, I, I don't like to speak for Steve himself because he would have a way way better answer to it but uh i'm going to give you my sort of observations of, of sort of dealing with steve off and on uh both he and myself as you can imagine are quite busy individuals right i mean and unlike uh myself he travels the world a lot so he's on planes and recuperating doing his uh his after doing shows and and uh doing up their performance so his time is very limited um and so he has to sort of pick and choose i know he's obviously big in the digital world uh and he had some prior commitments on it and so i i think he just he's trying to do the best he can given that there's a 24-hour day which is one of the reasons why he and his crew basically have handed the keys over to our side and say hey you guys do what you got to do, keep it going. And then, and then when he's got time, he's going to come in uh, and he doesn't really know when those specific moments are. Obviously he's going to do a drop and all that, then all that will be announced. But uh, his, his time of being able to sort of interact uh, is sort of hit and miss. I, I would argue mine's the same, but uh, he's, he's way more adventurous than I am. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. He's always, He's always there. I know that he has input on what we're doing, but he's basically saying, hey, since I'm not going to be around a ton, you guys basically do what makes uh, the most sense, and then he'll he'll pop in uh, when it basically makes uh, logical sense on his end. The, the next thing I, I wanted to ask is, what is your big vision for your digital community? 
uh, where do you see this server being in the end? And do you have a roadmap in your head or written down even uh, to how you're going to get to that point? And can you talk about any of that? Yeah. Uh, um, so here's... I think, uh, she's fond, you're thinking about it way more specific than I am, right? And so I've had these conversations uh, behind closed doors uh, with Jake and the dev team and everybody else. I don't, I, I sort of see fans and people who are interested in some of the art I do all as equals, right? And so... The goal isn't necessarily to build a giant digital presence per se, if that's your question. The, the, the goal is always the same, not to build a big comic book presence in fandom and not to build a big entertainment or toy fandom. It's just to build a big community, period. And I'm, I am way less concerned about who the people are that are in attendance uh, than I am thankful that they're in attendance, right? So right now, if I look at the audience there, if somebody was to say to me, Todd, 90% of the people are here for digital, I'd say, cool, awesome, right? I'm going to assume the questions are going to skew that way. If somebody said, hey, Todd, 90% of the people here just want to talk about comic books, they don't care about anything else, I'd say, cool. I'm going to guess that their questions are going to skew that way. I don't, I don't really have a prejudice, she Swan, as to who should or shouldn't be in. My, my goal, if, if, if you want to call it that, my blueprint is to just have all the doors open to all the things that I do, try and promote them and give as high a quality at as a, at a fair a price as possible, and then let the consumer make the decisions for themselves. Um, without any obligation that they have to sort of get interested in something that they're not interested in, right? So I'm going to assume there may be somebody in here who's like a toy fan, and when they step up, they're going to ask a question about toys. Okay, cool, love it. Uh, so uh, you hope that growth comes out of all that, which comes over time because it happens in all fields. So given that right now digital is... Uh, sort of the latecomer to the things that I do between entertainment and toys and comic book. I assume that eventually it'll catch up, um, but it's coming to the, to the sort of fan community gathering a little bit late. Um, and so, okay. I, I, I like to hang out here with you guys, but I'm not, I'm not biased if somebody wants to talk about something that has nothing to do with digital. Yeah, and that's kind of my what I I hope for this community is that it's just a big melting pot for all of your work, uh, a big melting pot for your fans. Yeah, and but, but, and but I, I, I one, really yeah, want to say more. I agree. So let, let me add one on one piece of that. Uh, she's mine. Um, we're we're in the midst of the, of sort of building out the big community, but you should be able to basically. Mm -hmm click and go into the areas that you are most interested in, right? Everybody shouldn't be in the same spot per se, right? So you should be able to come into the house of McFarland art, right? Let's just call it that. Let's consider it to be a house. You should be able to come into the house of McFarland art, um, all things McFarland. Not, and again, just so we're clear, when I talk about my companies and my brands and everything, I use the word McFarland. When I talk about myself, I use the word Todd. So uh, just make the distinction when I'm using those two words. Todd is me, McFarland are my companies. Um, so if I've got the, the art house of McFarland, then you should be able to come in and say, hey, I'm here for comic books. Where, where's that room? I'm going to go hang out in that room, right? Cool. Just, and you get to go over there. I, I don't want necessarily everybody sort of in a mosh pit all at the same time because there'll be sort of cross-pollinating over it. You should be able to sort of segregate once you're in the house. But the reason you're in the house is because you like something that the McFarland companies do, 
uh, and you should be able to go find people of like mind uh, to be able to do that. Now, if each one of those rooms grows, then the collective whole of the community gets bigger. And of course, there will be people who will go from one room to the other because everybody's not going to just come in and say, I collect Todd's comic books and that's all I care about. Some people can go, hey, I collect his comic books and I like his toys or I like his toys and I like the digital stuff. I mean, this is this is just allowing the fans to enjoy what it is they want and experience what it is that they want. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be sort of creating the path. My, I should just, the path should come to the house, the big giant house. And then I open up the doors and say, Hey, there are multiple rooms that you can go into, go enjoy yourself. Hopefully your visit is uh, enjoyable. That's it. That's all I got. Right. Like going to Disneyland, lots of rides, pick the rides you like. And then, and then hopefully go home and with a smile on your face. Doesn't mean you have to go on all the rides. I like the House of McFarland as a name for this server. That would be cool. I know we're odd key, but the House of McFarland would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Chief Spawn. Appreciate you getting things started today. All right. You have a good one. All right. Be good. Thanks, Chief Spawn. Welcome to stage, Mark. Go ahead. Hey guys, Big Bad Mark, he's always now, sneaking. I, I stalk you. I follow you everywhere, Todd. That's oh man! I, for, 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 all right, so many people there don't know here. Mark Mark Spears is a very, very, very talented artist, and uh, because he's so talented, I uh, got him to do some uh, covers for me. So if you haven't seen those covers, you should go take a look at him. He was one of my spotlight cover artists, and uh, Mark and I uh, he pitched me an idea that we're going to be talking about. I was actually having a conversation with my editor about it, that uh, Mark's got this funky, cool idea uh, that I think uh, when we get to round to it, uh, to announce it, because I think we're going to move forward with it, Mark, at some point. So uh, make sure that you hold my feet to what I just said. Um, I think, I think people are going to, I think people are going to dig it. Yeah. Hope so. Can't, can't wait to announce it. It'll be going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, so I know a lot of people out there uh, want to ask questions, so I got a my my quick question. Uh, so, so Spawn three forty comes out tomorrow, right? Uh, yep. With, with a great cover, uh, well, two great covers. Uh, one of them I did, and another great cover. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love the confidence. <laughs> so, um, on that, um, Sin is on the cover, uh, which is a, a pleasure to draw. What uh, is Sin the villain that you would love to have? Like the like your you know what? Uh, I guess where when you think of Batman, you think of Joker. Mm -hmm. When you think of Superman, you think of Lex Luthor. Mm -hmm. Is Sin going to be that one day for you with Spawn, or is it another character? I uh, Mark, it's not that he's going to be the Joker per se. It's more that. I think I need like a handful of top notch A plus villains, right? Yeah. And so um, I don't know if you and I have had the conversation or not about it, but th like to me, if I was to sit there and say, okay, name some of the cool bad guys, then you go, okay, there's even just in the Marvel universe, let's just go there. You've got Doctor Doom, right? I think he's I think he's an A plus villain, yeah. but but then you also have Magneto. I think he's A plus, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, in recent years, I think Thanos has climbed the charts. He's A plus, right? Galactus is A plus. Uh, when he was a, a bad guy, you know, you could put sort of Venom there. The uh, the Red Skull, um, yeah. and, you know, the Green Goblin. I'm trying to go down and see who's sort of the main bad guy for all these characters. But but what's kind of cool is that collectively. Once those villains are created, just like a good hero, that when they appear in other books, it has the same weight to it. So although I know that Dr. Doom, you know, was created and is essentially the arch nemesis of the Fantastic Four, when, when Dr. Doom appears in any comic book, let me just tell you, any comic book, when I was a kid, here's what I knew. Oh my God, Dr. Doom's going to be in it. This is going to be a multi-parter. I knew it was going to be a multi-parter. You know why? 
there's no way you can get in and out of a story with Dr. Doom in one issue. Now, are there other villains you can get in and out of in one issue? Of course, right? You and I could make a list if we wanted to. So the long-winded answer to your question is I want him to be one of the main bad guys that that in 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 a few years time when people say hey name the top three four bad guys in the spawn universe that he will be one of them so yes i'm trying to make him a top tier i don't know if he will be the top tier i would argue clown is maybe made his mark there um but could he be could he be a close second uh that's the goal all right, great, great answer, man. I appreciate it. We'll be talking to you more, Todd. Uh, thanks, everybody. All right, be good. I'll turn down. Appreciate you coming up, Mark. I would like to remind people that uh, make sure you check or checking your invite because if I invite you up to stage and you don't invite it, you might miss miss your chance to speak. Spawny boy, welcome to stage, man. Spawny Marco Polo, you'll be next. Oh, thank you. I'm going to give a call out to Lambo out in the crowd there. He's got a cool little icon there. His little avatar is looking cool. So, uh, way to go, Lambo. Yep. Spawny Boy, go ahead and ask your question, and then Marco Polo, you'll follow up. Uh, awesome. So, my question was, um, what is Todd's convention schedule looking like, and when <laughs> he'll be coming to Texas? Uh... Yeah, I think it's been a long time since I've been to Texas. Every now and then people will remind me, last time you came. Um, for the most part, uh, Spawny Boy, I I do two shows uh, a year. I, I, I do uh, uh, San Diego Comic Con. I do New York. Um, and part of it is I'm just, at my core, I'm just a homebody, right? Um, when I was younger, I used to hustle a lot more, but I... I I sort of had my 15 minutes of fame, so I'm sort of bored of me, right? Um, so I'll, I'll go to San Diego and I go to New York, and and really the reason I go to both of those shows uh, is because there's big mass media there, um, and it's it's sort of the easiest place to find interviews that you can talk to hundreds of thousands of people at a given time. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's always nice to get out of my house and go and meet the fans in person. Uh, but uh, in, in reality, you know, you're there for three, four days because of the limitations of what security allows you to do. You know, you only get a couple hours a day. You get to sign. So you get a total of maybe six to eight hours spending time with the fans. And and uh, you get another six hours maybe in New York. And that's 12 hours in, in person. And so I, I – I am very thankful for digital and technology that we can do what we're doing here tonight, that instead of people having to travel to San Diego and hope that the schedule works out, that they can come see me up on stage, that we can essentially do our virtual panels, which is me up on stage, Gavin, which I'm doing and bringing people up and asking them questions like you're doing. So it's like, I I don't know. It seems like it's way more convenient for all I know, Spawny Boy you're in your pajamas right now or you don't have any pants on. I don't know. Uh, but it's really easy for you and I to interact and you don't have to be where I'm at. And you can stay at home and I can come to you, which is technology. So uh, uh, let me also say when and if the movie sort of gets on its footing and it's going, then I'm going to get real heavy in the promoting of it. So I'm going to basically canvas as many places as possible and I'll, I'll i'll make sure that i come through texas on that on that tour so. thank you sir i appreciate you all right be good thanks bonnie boy coming up on stage marco polo you're next marco hey polo. i'm a huge fan um with the dead zones being opened will we ever see a return of now bulge in the comic book series at all or any form of it? uh no Right, and so it's interesting. Here's the thing that's funny, Marco, is yeah. that comic books you can always sort of write your way through anything, right? You can, yeah. you can, you can always get around anything. But from time to time, I think you need to give weight to the actions by not returning people from the dead um, mm. and and moving on. So. Malbolgia, although he's sort of the 
the creator, if you will, of, of Spawn, uh, he's gone. And now the story is shifted to well, who's going to eventually take over the throne, right? Like, because yeah. whoever had the throne before Malbolgia, he was a badass. So who's going to get the throne now? Um, and it's part of the reason that they want Spawn to open up the dead zones, those that are trapped on Earth. Because when he locked it, those that were on Earth can't get back home, right? Yeah. And there's a bunch of people that want to get back home. Why? Because some of them know that the throne's empty and they want to get on the throne and they can't get into the throne until the, the dead zones are open. And so that's why the dead zones are such a big deal for some people. One, some want to come to, to Earth, but more importantly, those that are trapped want to get, like Clown and Sin, you know, up until recently, we're like, we, I can't, we can't even get to the throne unless we can get through the portals and we got to get through the portals. Uh, so, uh, no, no return of Malbolgia. Uh, the, the question is, you know, in the future, can I create sort of the next coming of Malbolgia? So. Sounds pretty good then. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's so many combo, so many combo uh, companies are bringing back the characters too soon or I like that they yeah. keep them dead. Yeah. I, again, I, I, I'm not adverse to bringing people back and forth. Um, but I just, I, the ones that sat with me the most when I was younger was when somebody died and then I thought they were going to come back. And then eventually it was like, what? It's been five, six years. When are they coming back? And they're like, they're not coming. And I went, what? You're saying that that, that that story was like literally the death of them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I gotta go back and reread it now because I, I didn't know the magnitude of that was as heavy handed as it was. Right. So yeah. Like a permanent fix, yeah. Yep, I think I think I think the same is true in movies. I don't think I the movies that always had the most impact on me when I was younger was one if there was like a group of people, one of them died, right? Because the moment you die, you kill one in the posse, then it 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 places doubt in your head that you go, oh my god, anybody can die, right? Anybody can die because they just killed one of they just killed one of the heroes. Oh my gosh, anybody can die now, which I think is kind of cool because if you're in a movie where everybody has what they call the Hollywood force field around them and the bullets are killing everybody else but your hero, uh, you're you know, and again, I understand when there's only one hero, but when there's a you know, like the Dirty Dozen, if you're gonna watch a classic movie like Dirty Dozen, one of them has to die because then it puts the other eleven at, at jeopardy for the rest of the movie because you go shoot. They killed one of them. There's not a dozen anymore. Uh, okay, so once you get away from a dozen, then you could basically get rid of all of them, right? It becomes Agatha Christie's Ten Little Indians now. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you're gonna put some danger in the movie. Otherwise, it's it's too safe. Yeah, yeah, and I and the same is true in the comic books. I think I think you need I think you need to have some permanent um, permanent moves that are part of the mythology. And, and and not go back on it. Yep. Makes sense. Thank you so much, Don. All right, you be good. You do, Appreciate bro. you, Marco Polo, coming up on stage like that. Mason Lane, you're next, my boy. Hello? What are you doing, Mason? Okay. Hi. I'm currently freaking out, but that's besides the point. Um, oh, cool. you got a cool little avatar there, too. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, God. <laughs> I thought I got all my nerves out. Anyway, um, so okay. Here, I'm gonna, kind of I'm, been... gonna put, I'm gonna put my hand on your shoulder and calm you down. Do you feel? Do okay, you feel? Okay. Do you feel there? Take a deep breath. We're good. Glad to have you here. So, uh, tell me what's on your mind. Thank you, sir. Um, so for a long time, it's kind of been a goal of mine to become a comic book illustrator and reading a lot of image books has been a, a lot of fun and I was just kind of wondering what the application process for an artist would be and what kind of work I would show. Um, I, I would, you know, in all honesty, there's not really an application from the artist. I, I it literally, you're either, you're, you, you just either got the goods or you don't from somebody's perspective. Right. And we've had these questions before where, you show your artwork off to as many people as possible as often as possible and just hope that one day one of them 
says, oh, Mason, that's pretty awesome. I'll give you a job, right? And it doesn't matter. I've, I've said it over and over and over and over. It doesn't matter if 100 people look at your artwork and 99 of them think it stinks, but one of them gives you a job. You got a job. You got a job. That's all you're looking for is one yes in the crowd. That's, that's it. Uh, and who gives a shit about the other 99 at that point? Because you got a job drawing, right? So um, the onus really is on us, each artist, to go out there and basically keep practicing and teaching ourselves and learning our craft and then showing it to as many people as we can. And this is where, uh, you know, either putting your art on the internet, uh, which I never had the luxury of doing. So I had to literally either send it through the mail or go to conventions. And both of those are still valid. Uh, but go, go talk to other artists and show them your artwork and get pointers because they may say, ah, you're not ready, but they may be able to give you a couple pieces of constructive criticism that will help you improve for the next time, right? And, and as I've told the story many times, it took me years of doing that and 700 samples of which I got over 300 rejections just through the mail. Forget what I got at conventions. Um, and, and then eventually I got my one yes. And it was, woo, I'm in comic books. And, and the, the 300 rejections, arguably 700, because the other ones that didn't respond just threw them in the garbage. Uh, the 700 rejections, essentially, before I got my first yes, were forgotten in a heartbeat because I, I had my, my first job. Cool. So uh, just, just bang it, just bang it, just bang it, and keep going, and somebody will recognize it at some point. Um, let me also say, Mason, you got to advocate for yourself, right? I've said this one before, and I'm going to go to my grave saying it. You have to be your biggest advocate. You have, to, you have to believe in yourself more than anybody else. It can't be your neighbor. It can't be your brother. It can't be your, 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 your family members. It can't be your friends. It can't be anybody else. It has to be you, right? It has to be you. Because, because th my theory, and maybe you find somebody else different, that I look at your artwork and I go, oh my gosh, Mason, that's pretty cool. But you're, you just don't have the personality to be able to take rejections and be able to have people say critical things about it, whatever else. Or, you, you know, you go, well, I don't want to send out my artwork because I might get rejected. And my simple response to you, Mason, that, and I'm, I'm not saying you, I'm using you as a metaphor, is, Mason, if you don't give a shit about yourself, why should I? Right? I want to care about you once you care about yourself. So it's nobody's job on this planet to, to drag Mason across the finish line other than it is Mason. And I'm using your name as a generic everybody, right? So if you want to be an artist, then, then go teach yourself, practice as much as possible, and just knock on every door and, and just rattle every chain uh, and cage until you get a yes. And then you can do it. And if you don't have the personality to do that, then that will eventually come true also. So, uh, you know, I, I know actors and actresses and they, they do three, four, five editions a week. And then usually they get like one yes out of about every 80 editions or 90 editions. Right. <laughs> you get ready, get ready for the nose. Uh, cause they come, they come way, 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 way easier than the yeses, but I'm telling you, the yeses are pretty sweet when they do come. All right, good luck to you, Mason. Thank you very much, sir. I hope you can be my yes one day. Yeah. Well, if not me, anybody. <laughs> wow. Anybody. And then you go, I'm in, and then you go, I'm going to knock that old man McFarland off stage. Send him a beat. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. No, well, yes, come on. I would have done it. Okay, when I was right, young, right. I'm going, I'm not going to let some old man sort of be up on stage instead of me. I'm going to take him down. So come on. Uh, I, I got a self-confidence. Let's go. That's it. Yeah, my, my problem, my problem, Mason, is that sadly, some, I got way too much of that chemical in me. Uh, and, I, and so I think they poured way too much confidence, and then they subtracted fear because uh, I don't have too much of that in me. So I was like, I'm too, I'm too confident, and I have no fear of failure, uh, which is bordering. If you take those two and mix them together, it's bordering on delusion. Uh, but so far, it served me quite well. 
I appreciate you coming up, Mason. And yes, take his advice, post it everywhere, including that artist alley. We would love to see your work. Uh, yep. The Nature Boy, you're you're next, man. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And I see I see out in the audience, Pure Venom 189. So cool name. Hey, Todd, thanks for taking my question. I wanted to ask both you and Mark, have you ever had an instance where you've hurt your, your dominant drawing hand and have had to draw with your other hand? No, but uh, the answer, the simple answer is no. But the other day, somebody asked me, I've never been asked this before. Somebody said, hey, Todd, can you sign your name with your opposite hand? I'm left-handed, right? Yeah. And... uh I went, what? And they go, yeah, I just want you to sign my comic book, but can you use your opposite hand? And I, and it's like, wow, like you wouldn't think it would be that tricky. You should try it. Everybody in the audience should go and try it at some point. You know, you're so used to signing your name. Go, what does it look like if I try to emulate that with my opposite hand? It, it, cause you're, cause you're going in the opposite direction. So it sort of messes you all up. But, um, but for my actual drawing hand, the answer is no. I've had people ask me, nature boy, uh, Todd, do you insure your drawing hand? The answer is no, because I'm not a big fan of insurance. So I, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me started on that. Um, and so I, and the reason I don't, because I have, I'm going to play the Vegas odds here, right? And so here's, the, here's, here's my Vegas odds. I'm in a car and then I get into a 20 car pileup and my car rolls 20 times in the ditch and then it falls off the embankment and it goes down. And then they have to air vac me to the hospital, right? Here's, here's, here's what can happen to me. They go, oh, my God, Todd, your body has been terribly, terribly injured. We've got to cut off both of your legs. Yeah, okay. You've got to cut off your right arm. Yeah, okay. We've got to basically get rid of one of your ears. Yeah, sure, fine. Uh, you're blind in one eye. Oh, that's too bad. You've lost most of your teeth. Yeah, that's not good either. Uh, and on your left hand, we have to cut off your pinky and the finger next to it. Yeah. But guess what? Even with all that, I can still draw. You know why? Because I got one eye and I still have my thumb and the, my two, my middle finger, and my index finger. And that's all I need. That's and so need. I, this is why I don't have insurance. I'm betting that if I get into that accident, that one eye and those three those three fingers are going to survive and everything else pretty much can get sort of amputated. I'm good. I can still draw a Spider-Man and spawn head. Don't worry about me. So that's, that's my calculus. Other people are way more skittish than me. Uh, but that's part of the self-confidence and delusion uh, that I just go, nah, both my eyes and my left hands never getting chopped off. So anyway, you think maybe it could be one of your uh, doodles uh, that you could auction off or oct. I should do a right-handed doodle. A right-handed drawing. That would be awesome. Yeah, I should. I should try it. I should try. What's a right-handed? I probably could do, in all honesty, you know what? We're going to try one. I probably could do a pretty decent monster because, like I said before, the great thing about monsters is nothing's wrong. So yeah. no matter how bad I am, I'll just go, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course that wiggle is supposed to be like that. Of course his teeth are supposed to be all gnarly like that. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to answer. I'll hop off. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Nature. Appreciate you coming up. Richard, you got the floor. Hi there, Todd. It's really awesome speaking to you. Um, oh, yeah, yeah yesterday, on, uh, yesterday on Twitter, Brett Booth mentioned that he's planning on leaving the Gunslinger title around, like, issue 24. Uh, he said, oh, like, yeah? The what? Yeah, he didn't me? <laughs> he said, like, the plan was to stay for like, two years, and that's coming to a close in 2023, which really sucks because I absolutely love the art. It's, it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but my question for you is, like, how long do you plan on keeping the gunslinger title going for I, I hope it's for as long as possible and no um when 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 B brett booth does leave the title do you like is there any artists you have in mind that are going to take over um yeah i mean i talk it's interesting because i talked to brett uh man maybe i pushed him off the book because i was like saying hey brett you've been on it for two years you want to do anything else right um you know trying to be fair to everybody right i don't want to I don't want people to sort of get bored of what they're doing or whatever else. So uh, part of the conversations was, is there any other characters that you have in mind or any other things you want to do uh, that aren't sort of gunslingers per se, right? Um, mm. uh, and so he had a handful of characters he said he'd like to draw. Um, but I, uh, 
I'll have to circle back to him and say, oh, okay, is this just us going and doing one of those other characters, one of those other books, creating new characters, which we talked about? Because he actually, a couple of days ago, sent me a drawing of a new character that I thought was super cool. Um, uh, but uh, if and when any artist leaves, then I have to have somebody eventually there. One of the things I was talking to him about was if, he, you know, he was thinking of leaving, then if he gave me enough heads up, then I, I'll have three, four months to basically do a good hunting job so that I can bring somebody in because I think Brett set the bar so high, right? He really um, did. It's like, it's going to be very hard to reach that level. Reach yeah. That level. Yeah. No, he has a style that very few, I think, you know, will fall into that bucket. So you just have to, you just have to find somebody else whose style is, is fun and interesting. Uh, and see if you can keep the vibe going. But I, I, I know I have, as the writer of the book, I know I have lots and lots of uh, of stories still to be told on the gunslinger side uh, before I even get bored of it. So uh, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll figure it all out. It, like I'm, I'm, I'm all about trying to come up with you know quality people and put them on so that we can give you guys you know as much value for your two ninety nine as possible. And and just so you know, the two ninety nine is the cheapest on on the new you know on, in the comic book stores, right? I'm the only guy. I'm the only guy at two ninety nine. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for answering my question. Sure. Appreciate you coming up, Richard Nitaku. Go ahead, man. The floor is yours. Hello, Todd. Good night or good morning, depending on where you are. Um, I'm, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, so it's uh, six forty five. In, in, in 100 degrees. In wow. Well, uh, I did initially have a, uh, a toy question, but I think more importantly, I would just like to say, uh, along with my new friend Mason, I am a aspiring comic book artist. And, uh, well, hang on just one sec. Nerves. Um, I don't know. This is just really awesome getting to talk to you. I would just not expecting this it's very uh inspiring you know and, how's, um, the, how's the artwork going for you it's going good uh i've been in school you know just uh writing and drawing with my uh my best friend we have a comic together yeah um yeah it's uh god i get what mason was saying about the nerves i thought i had it all worked out too what um, oh Come on, man. The world traps are good fun here. Don't worry about it. I'm, I don't bite, and I can't anyways, even if I wanted to. No, I know. I get you. I'm just... Um, I had it all planned out, and it just went out the, right out the window. So I guess I'll just ask my question. Okay. Um, for DC Multiverse, I don't know how much control you have over uh, what figures get made, but I would really love to see a uh, Kirby-inspired dark side to go with that, uh, that Calabac that just came out. That was pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but if I did have to suggest anything, I would say the question. I think there's not enough figures of the question, and Ditko's severely underrepresented just in general. Yeah, yeah. The uh, so the it's interesting because the the two things about making toys are that you you either pick things characters that look good on the shelf right they don't have to be popular they just have to look really awesome out of package up on your shelf because then you can sell that to anybody right and then and then there's the ones that are popular and if they're popular then they don't have to look as cool because they're people know who they are right so i could sell a getting away from dc but i could sell if i had the license a men in black uh figure why because the movie is well known and it's just basically people in three piece suits, right? If right. they weren't if they weren't well known, I don't know that people are going, why am I gonna buy a toy with a guy in a three piece suit? And the answer is because it's based on something that you recognize. Short of that, I got a way better chance of of selling maybe one of the creatures that's in Men in Black, because that looks like a toy and that looks cool to as many people as possible. So 
when we're making our decisions, a lot of times, and so this is basically going back to Steve Ditko's the question, it's still a guy in a hat and a, and a trench coat, right? Okay. Um, not, not the sexiest looking thing when there are other characters, even some of the Jack Kirby ones uh, that you, you mentioned, that would look really awesome as a toy in plastic, right? They'd be big and bulky, and they'd have some cool colors on them and nice d- uh, detail and stuff like that. So given all things being equal, I usually trip to the cool visual uh, before before I, I go to people in trench coats. So. Right. Fair enough. Well, it's uh, I really appreciate appreciate you answering my question, and uh, this is very motivating, very inspiring. Yeah, I've been, sure. uh, thanks for coming I've up. Yeah, thank you. I'll uh, give it to the next person. All right. Thanks, Taku, for coming up. Gam LX, you are next, my friend. Go ahead and ask your question. You may have to click the unmute button so you're na- you're able to speak. Okay, you might have some mic problems as well. Make sure you're not on push to talk. In the meantime, Rawl Sessipades, go ahead and ask your question while Gam figures out his audio. I'll message you uh, to help you figure it out. Mm, hi. Uh, hello, Todd. Uh, hi, Ray. <laughs> Good. And it's awesome to talk with you again. I, I feel so very grateful for with you. And... <laughs> Sorry, I'm nervous. I have one question. <laughs> one question. Uh, what is the first thing uh, you think when you want to create a new charter for Spawn or, or comic books? I, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a multi-part question. Um, and as I look at the audience, I see that James Fox is there. Not Jamie Fox, but James Fox. So... Hey, James. Uh, look, when when you're creating a character, it usually, for me, it usually is based on what's happening in the book and what I need that character to do, either both good or bad, right? Because sometimes, I mean, the character can be a villain and the character can be a hero or somebody in between. It could just, you know, be somebody who's a, a police officer or a doctor or whatever else. But let's just stick with heroes and villains for now. Um, it, it, it just depends what I need out of the story, right? So if, I, if I'm missing something that I think helps me bridge an idea that I have, uh, I, 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 and I don't have that character in existence, I'll, I'll just go, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have to create that character. And, and so... Is that then somebody who's seven feet tall and weighs 800 pounds and looks more like the Hulk? Or is it somebody who is, you know, five foot 10 female and looks like she weighs 110 pounds, right? Either way, it depends on what I'm trying to get across at that time. Uh, at the end of it, regardless, then whether it's a hero and or a villain, there should be some visual intrigue to the character so that people at some point, once they see the character over and over, recognize who that character is. Um, And it's, I think, a a little bit of a trick on how you create uh, costumes that you, although it's fun to do a lot of detail on a costume, the reality is that you have to draw that costume every panel and there's sometimes 120 panels in a book and it it can be tough if you put too much detail on it this is why most of the characters that are probably some of your favorites if you actually look at their costumes um they're they're i don't want to say simplistic i think they're very graphic and 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 they stick in your mind really quickly and it's not based on how i mean even spawn with he's got spikes and he's got chains but I'm guessing that Spawn still is the dude with the big red cape. And then he's got the big black and white costume with the big M on his chest. And I think and it's a couple of skulls. I think most people that have to describe him go, that's what his costume is, with the white marks on his face, black and white. Um, and so the details 
of all the other stuff that goes with it. Although it can make them look cool and they make great toys, uh, become difficult to draw. So uh, I I try to make him replicatable or her replicatable and just serve the story any way I, I see fit. I mean, I've got like issue number 20 of Gunslinger. Brett Booth just sent me the last pages. He just killed, he just killed this issue uh, visually. So he's just getting warmed up. And uh, there's a character in there that's making a comeback that we've seen before. Her name is Dakota. Uh, she was in issue number four, I think. Um, but there's, she was created with the story in my head. I just didn't want to tell it all at, in issue number four. In issue five, I think she was in. So I, I brought her back, and now you're going to get a little bit, I hope, of a of a surprise by the time you read page 20. You're going to go, what? Didn't see that one coming. Um, and then it, and then once you have that piece of information, then it changes the dynamics of the reason why she's doing what she's doing and the reason why Gunslinger is doing what he's doing. So that's the fun on creating stories. You just sort of make it up on the on the go, and every now and then it actually turns out better than you thought, and other times it turns out worse. Thank, thank you so much. All right, for, thanks, Raul. Be good. Uh, one, one thing more, uh, sorry. I do one illustration for a git for you. And, oh, okay. and try to to give the the illustration, and it's so difficult for me. And it's the, my form for, oh, so. Post it, so, post, it, uh, post it on one of the forms here and somebody get it to me. Okay, uh, thank you so much, and I appreciate that with you, uh, and it's awesome. T thank right, you. Good. Nice Thanks. to see you. Uh, Gavin S is coming up. By coincidence, I was looking through the audience, and I actually was looking at Gavin. Uh, Gavin, I was look, looking at your uh, your icon there because you had two heads in it, and I go, oh, look at that. That's pretty sweet. Yes, the, um, the Nickelback photograph photo from the music video. I thought I do oh. the profile as a picture as a joke. Yeah, no, that's cool. So I like it. Uh, it's it it's uh it's an honor to be able to talk to you. You I'm I'm 23 and you've been an inspiration to me as long as I can remember. Um, I'm an aspiring writer, and my favorite story you ever wrote was Spider-Man Torment. And I want to know a question I want to ask in terms of writing is, what is the key element in um, writing an interesting character, and what's a way to make the reader want to read more about that said character? Um, uh, so I'm going to be completely honest, Gavin, that there are many, many, many better writers than I am. So I would pick their brains also, uh, because don't, don't take what I have to say as gospel because I don't consider myself that great of a writer. I, I, I think I can lay down good stories and stuff, but, um, for, when you're going to do a story, there's a, there's a couple of uh, tricks that you can sort of look at. Uh, one, uh, especially in a 20-page comic book, you just sort of need to know where you want to end up at, uh, by page 20, right? So, okay, when I start page one, I know where I got to get to. So, so it sort of dictates a little bit of what I have to accomplish in between it. I don't have to necessarily know everything in advance but if i know the the beginning and the end then the roadmap sort of becomes a little bit easier right so if i'll give you a bad example if i've got spawn is in bed sleeping right in his backyard uh and he's drinking you know iced tea uh and that's the beginning and then i know that the last uh page is going to be that spawn's tied up and somebody threw him and he has no powers, and he gets thrown out of a helicopter. And the last shot is a powerless spawn thrown out of a helicopter, right? Okay, if, if I've got those two things, now the question is, how do I get from point A to point B? In, in, in a fairly interesting way, right? Um, and Because, again, you're still doing comic books. So it can't all be you know, super realistic and or drama. You have to you have to acknowledge that we are a visual medium. And and then you sort of navigate your way 
to those endings. I'll give you an example, right? Because again, I'll, I'll, I think comic books allow you to get anywhere if you have flexibility. When I first brought Brett Booth on to uh, Gunslinger, uh, I asked him, hey, and I asked this question to all my artists, hey, what would you like to draw? Because I think a happy artist is a productive artist and it will show up on page. And Brett Booth said, I love dinosaurs. Without hesitation, I love dinosaurs. So by issue four, I just mentioned earlier, we created a new character. Her name is Dakota. And Dakota... I said, hey, let's create a character who controls dinosaurs then, right? I thought he was going to, you know, create like somebody that looked like the rhino or something like that, some big burly dude. But instead, he decides he was going to come in with this stealth little, you know, skinny looking female. Um, that triggered new ideas. The moment I saw her, it triggered new ideas. And I just went, yeah, cool. Uh, we, we can do it. Now, Here's 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 the the question. Why do you got dinosaurs in a in a in a cowboy story, right? It it seem it could seem stupid. Uh and maybe it is to some people. Number one, I need to keep Brett Booth entertained because I think his artwork is spectacular and I need to keep him happy. So there's part one. Part two, I'll just I'll figure it out. So why does Dakota need dinosaurs? Okay, and why, 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 why are we dealing with this? Well, let me give you part of the answer uh, that eventually we'll get to in the next couple issues here. What, is a, what does a dinosaur look like? A dinosaur looks like a creature and a monster. What do monsters look like? They look like dragons. What do dragons look like? They look like demons. To me, they're all in the same gene pool, right? Everything is just a, another version of the gene pool. Everybody goes and gets a DNA test so they can know their ancestry. Why can't dragons and monsters and demons and creatures and dinosaurs, why can't they all, if you back it all back, why can't they have some overlapping DNA? And the answer is, at least in my story, they will. And so why does she need dinosaurs? Why isn't she why isn't she trying to control monsters and or demons? And the answer is because there's others that are way stronger than Dakota that already have control over those. And so her only way to survive is to have come up with another way to control power that others have yet to learn. And the one segment that they forgot about was dinosaurs because they went after the, the dragons and the monsters and the creatures and the demons and they forgot the dinosaurs. So, okay, I can give you an in-depth reason as to why she needs dinosaurs because at some point she might march them all into hell and take on all the demons of hell. And it'd be a hell of a visual if it ever happens. Don't know if it will. So I accomplished two things. One, Brett Booth gets to draw dinosaurs and he's Super awesome at it. And two, um, uh, I've got a story that forces me to come up with creative ways to justify why any of it's on the page without it coming across as silly. So it now adds to part of the mythology. Okay. Again, people can choose after they read it to go, God, that's silly. Uh, and, and again, we get to do that with any movie, TV show, or book we read. So cool. Um, that's that, that everybody gets to have their own opinion about their art. But, but all I have control over is given reasons to justify why anything is on a piece of paper. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And so we'll see, we'll see if people go for the ride of this whole DNA, DNA connection between all these creatures. Well, I think it just sounds awesome. I I, th I think you're a great writer. You wrote one of the best Spider-Mans ever. And like I said, Torment is amazing. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, I, I would consider myself a pretty good writer. <laughs> but like I said, I think there's plenty others that are out there that do a better job. So. Well, thank you so much again. Yeah, be good. Thanks, Gavin, for coming up. I appreciate it. Gam, let's try that mic. Uh, is it working now? Yes, sir. 
Ken Swan. I see Ken Swan out there. He's got a cool. He's got a cool little uh, avatar too. Hey, Ken Swan. So. Go okay. ahead, Cam. Floor's yours. Um, I'm gonna, I'm the nerds to go inside. That's my son in the background. Um, uh, yeah, I, I gotta say, I, I, I know what, um, what, uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, hey, before, before, you get going, saying, before you get going, Jake, I got my son up, uh, Gamex, I got my son up on stage here. Jake, uh, I need you to do a little wine like that too, just so he can see that I got my kid makes noises. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can go that high pitch. No, please do, Jake. Yeah, that's my son. He keeps inter he keeps interrupting. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, I, I just gotta say, I, I know you heard it a million times. It's an honor. Uh, you're a massive, massive influence growing up as a kid. Um, and and I, I just just to touch on what the other two artists were saying. Um, you know, we did. I don't even know if I have much of a question or if it's. I don't know. I would like to pick your brain for hours, man. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm just an aspiring artist. I'm 38 years old. Um, I started taking it serious again in the last year or so. Like I wasted a lot of my youth messing around doing dumb stuff. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, I'm just. I, it's just an honor to speak with you, man. And um, yeah, 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 yeah Gamers, let, let, let me just see if I can give you a little bit of inspiration, right? Uh, especially uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an old man now, right? So, or I'm getting older. Let me just leave it at that. Um, here's what I know. And here's what I knew even when I was younger. Manual, manual labor and manual work, you know, which is basically hunched over a board for 10 hours, 12 hours a day. I used to do plenty of days where I would, I, I'd work through the night literally and not go to sleep. And sometimes I'd fall, I'd, I'd be falling asleep. So I'd, I'd, jump in the shower for five minutes to wake myself up and I go back to the board. So sometimes I do like, you know, 36 hour stints or whatever. Oh. All of that is way easier to do when you're younger. Right. So the, the thing about you're saying you're, you're 30 and maybe you blew you. You're still, to me, you're still a young kid, right? It, this is now the time to put in the hard work, Right. You, and then if you put in the hard work and it pays off, you get to have a lot of fun when you get older because now you don't have to do the hard work uh, and you can sort of enjoy the, you know, quote unquote, the fruits of your labor, right? So um, I I think that I've sort of gotten to where I got because when I was younger, when people were having a good time because they're young and they want to go to the parties and have a good time on Friday, I was I was at home drawing. I was just doing, I was, I, I always consider myself to be the, the, if you've heard the three pig story, right? Somebody built one out of straw, somebody built one out of wood, and somebody built one out of brick, a house. I, 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 from, from the very get go, I go, I'm going to build a, I'm going to build a brick house, uh, early in my life. And, and then if I, if it works, which is basically put in the hard work early, then I might not have to basically work physically as hard. Uh, as I did when I was in my twenties and thirties, right? So, um, you still have, you still have the time. You got a whole decade in your thirties to basically just grind it, right? Cause I'm telling you, it's going to come way easier for you than when you're in your fifties and sixties. So do it now, right? Just, just yeah. grind, just, uh, just grind it. And the worst that happens is it doesn't work, right? I mean, no, no, no harm, no foul. It doesn't work. So, okay. yeah, but honestly, that that's great. That's a big inspiration to hear. Um, I just lost my chain of thought. Um, but yeah, I that that gives me. Um, I feel like maybe it was meant to happen that way for me. Just just like you're saying, now that I'm older, a little bit wiser. So now I, I have more of the. But I don't want to get too much into that. But um, I just the last thing I want to say. I don't want to take too, too much of, of your time. Let someone else speak. I'm a big firm believer in speaking things into existence. And I hope that uh, one day I get to work with or for you, and I look forward to it if it does happen. All right. Well, best, best of luck. I'm always on the lookout for super talented people, so I'm hoping you're one of them. Thanks a lot. I appreciate. I deeply appreciate it. You're a big inspiration. And uh, I don't mean to promote too, too much, guys, but if you guys um, want to check my stuff out, it's the same username, Gamelex, and it's a good, good honor talking to you. Yeah, be good. Good luck to you.
Appreciate you coming up, Gam. Have a uh, hope you have a good night. Trash boat, you're next. Four is yours. Trash boat, look at that. Look at that cool picture. Uh, hey, what's going on, Tom? What are you up to? Uh, not much, actually. Just watching uh, the Spawn TV show. Oh, what? For the first time. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm missing the D backs. I need to check to see what the score is. Hopefully, I can listen to it. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, my name's Owen, uh, 16, and I just want to tell you that ever since I was five, you've been a big inspiration to me, and mm-hmm. you're the reason why I want to become a comic book illustrator. And I was just wondering, like, for you to create a new character for a new series, what, like, goes behind your inspiration for all that? Uh, we talked about it a little bit uh, with a couple, uh, a couple questions ago, uh, just sort of uh, taking a look at what I've got uh, in the book happening, but you know, look at here, here's the thing. Here's the thing that's sort of interesting that there is no right way or secret formula to create anything that's going to be popular because if, if we knew how to do it and I knew how to do it, I'd have, I'd have 10 spawns by now. Right. Um, there's only been a couple of people in North America that have figured it out and they're unicorns, right? Uh, Walt Disney created a handful of characters that's still with us today. Stan Lee co-created with his artist a bunch of characters that are, you know, the backbone now of uh, the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. Um, and, and you know, George Lucas put down a bunch of characters that have now all sort of, you know, spawned themselves into, uh, you know, different directions. So, but but if it was that easy, then I I wouldn't be stuttering at the end of like three names, right? Uh, so I've said to people, look, if you ever get lucky enough that you can create Spider or, or Spider Man or Superman, don't worry that you didn't create Batman. <laughs> take take it's a pretty good life if you create Superman and that's all you create, or if you create Spider Man, that's all you create, right? And oh by the way, the reason I say that. Cause I got this guy named Spawn. I've been sort of hugging him for a long time, 30 years now. And my life's been pretty good given that I've sort of used him as the focal point of everything that branches out from it. So do I have now hundreds of characters that surround him? Of course I do. But is he still the focal point of it? Yeah. But again, if you, if, if you have one or two good ideas, that's okay. You don't have to look, if you come up with the Harry Potter series, I don't know. Do you have to come up with a second series? Or do you basically just come up with a couple more Harry Potter stories and then enjoy your life, right? Uh, nothing wrong Nothing wrong with not working and spending time with family and friends and traveling and doing things that you find enjoyable, whatever that may be personally. So uh, the, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it, 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 I, I, there's, there's a lot of dumb luck that goes with everything that anybody's ever accomplished, myself included. And when and where that dumb luck rears its head, I, you never know, right? It just shows itself every now and then, and you take advantage of it. And and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So, um, and the and it's interesting. A couple of people came up and said, you know, oh Todd, your inspiration. That just sort of is code for Todd. You've been around a long time, and you're kind of getting old, right? So. If you can, if you can stay in any profession for decades, and I've been fortunate enough that I can, you really don't have to be great at you, you it, because you've had such a long career that people will just know who you are. Um, so, if you're in the music business, you don't have to have been the bestseller. You don't have to be the Eagles or the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. You can be some, but if you've been around. For, for decades, people know who you are. You don't have to be great singers. You don't have to be great musicians per se, right? I'd put Kiss in that category. And every one of us knows who Kiss is. Why? Because they turn out some pretty cool songs, and uh, they've been around since I was a kid. Cool, right? So longevity is also a great, great value if you can get your foot in the door. So uh, never... Never underestimate time. I think it's the one thing that some of my fellow creative comic book people forget. They do five issues of a comic book and then they move on. And it's like, man, you should have given them 
10, 20. I mean, look at Brett, Brett Booth's going to do 24 issues of, of, of Gunslinger. And even if he doesn't do another issue of Gunslinger for the rest of his life, people are going to be talking about his 20, first 24 issues because he set, he set the standard of what that book should be. And in 20 years from now, he'll be doing sketches of, at conventions of Gunslinger's head. Cool, right? So he spent two years of his life. Cool. That's it. Now I can go and spend a couple of years doing something else and making another mark and another mark and another mark. So, yeah, that was very inspirational. My heart is beating so fast right now. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck to you. Go knock down the doors. <laughs> Thank you. I will. Have a good night. Yeah. Appreciate you coming up, Trash Boat. Spawn 1992. Hey. You have the hey. floor. Uh, Spawn, Spawn 1992, before you get going, I just want to sort of say something to the crowd out here, too. Um, for some of you out there that are that are into some of the digital stuff, uh, if you don't know, or hopefully you do, hopefully Rem and Jake have been doing their jobs properly. Uh, we got we've got they know. our our OCT drop on Thursday, right? So uh, go and look for that. It's going to be super cool. Uh, I think Jake has for some of you that don't know that some of the toy people and comic book people in here. Uh, the OCT is just our goofy way of giving away free stuff, and but then you can you can somehow convert it so you can get in line for other stuff. It's just it's just a way for us to engage the community. Um, and this one's going to be an original drawing, since I don't really do a lot of the original drawings. Uh, some of, some of them uh, are are going to basically be a static shot of the drawing. Some are going to be a small handful, are going to be a 20 second time elapse, and then some are a small group are going to be, uh, I think, a 30, 35 second time elapse. Is that right, yes, Jake? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. And I think Jake, Jake. Uh, and there it is. It goes. And, and again, you know, we give it away. We, again, these are free things that then you can use. And uh, yeah. in the yep. future, we get in line for other stuff. So well, there's not that many of them, but again, trying to make them sort of have some value, given that we're giving them away for free. So, uh, anyways, I know I know there's uh, conversations being had. Some people sort of get digital art, and some people don't. Uh, to me, art's art. Art's art. So uh, I don't care whether it's in plastic, it's on paper, or if it's on my computer, it's all art to me. Or whether it's on the TV screen or or at the theater, it, art, it's all art. So uh, just, again, everybody gets to decide what art they like to consume uh, and take home. So, uh, but uh, I don't think that anybody should be putting down anybody else for the kind of art that they personally enjoy. So, because uh, when I was a kid, they used to make fun of me for collecting comic books. So, No judgment zone. Everyone collects what they love. Yeah, that's it. Just look, I, I, art to me is, uh, like I said, just like a big buffet, right? You go down, you go down when you've been to the buffet, you got your plate and it's empty, and then there's like a hundred options, and then you put whatever you you like on your plate, and you might only put five or ten things on your plate, and just let the other ninety go by. Don't worry about it, right? You don't have to get mad that they've got pimento olives and you don't like pimento olives. Just don't put them on your plate. Done. Put put the put the potatoes with bacon on it if you like that, right? Just so it's always it's always interesting to me that sometimes people want to instill their likes or dislikes on other people, right? Just take t you know take take what you like and let everybody else enjoy their their stuff, right? Sort of like like I said, it's like going to Disneyland and saying, well, my favorite ride is the is the Dumbo ride, right? I don't understand why anybody else goes on anything else ridiculous, right? Just let people go on the rides they want. And and hopefully everybody goes home with a smile on their face, regardless of what rides they did or didn't go on. So. Exactly. And if you're interested in Odd Key and learning more about that project, their YouTube channel has a bunch of tutorials and how to get involved. But Spawn, I uh, appreciate your patience, man. Go ahead and take the floor. Well, 1992, that's when the first issue came out. That's it. That's it. I uh, can't forget it, Todd. It's uh, been a long journey. My son and I, we follow you daily, all your content, everything on IG and Oddkey here. And uh, just like, it's a two brief questions. And I know you can't have two, but it's they're super fast. Okay. One is, where do you see image 
and yourself as far as covers and interiors and inking in the next 10 years and spawn in general, you know, and, and with a 10 year plan. And will we ever see Lego spawn universe, like to strike a deal with Lego? We would love that. I mean, I'm, I'm, oh, I would give anything for that. <laughs> uh, the, the actually, so let's go real quick uh, on the toy side. The two that people are asking about are, are Spawn Legos and uh, Spawn Funko Pops, right? Those are the two that people go, when are you going to make them? Um, mm -hmm. And because I, because I do my own toys, right? And I've actually done, you know, what, what is Legos is in a category called construction, right? Mm -hmm. Construction toys, which is bricks and you build it, right? Um, I know people use the word Lego like, napkins and kleenex uh, is a generic term but the, but the actual term is uh, construction um and we did we did some of that with uh, i think rick and morty and five nights of freddy what was really successful for us we did some mm. walking dead and even game of thrones uh construction site uh, so mm, at some point if i decide i'm gonna get there um i'll probably just do them with my own toy company and then they'll be mm -hmm. in the same aisle right next to my competitor. Um, okay. and so it, it doesn't mean they can't exist because I can make them myself. Right. So, uh, so I've, it's always weird for me to go, I'm a toy guy. Why am I going to let other people make toys for me? So I'm, I'm a little bit uh, sort of conservative on that front that's uh, there. And then uh, on the image front, look at the goal is for image to basically last as long as Marvel and DC have, just basically live way past the original founders, right? Eventually, all of us are going to die, uh, and hopefully Image Comic Books will continue to thrive, uh, and hopefully I can say the exact same thing about uh, the Spawn character, right? The one thing about all those characters that I talked about that George Lucas, Stan Lee, and Disney created, the one thing that they will all have in common is that they're going to all be popular past the lives of their original creators. And that's, to me as a creator, I, from the very get-go when I was young, that mm -hmm. was always the nirvana. That was the home run. Can I create something that lasts past me? Because by the time I broke into comic books, Walt Disney had already passed on. And yet I could see that, he, not. I'm not saying I'm going to be, uh, Disney, but if you use people like him as your inspiration and you go, I can get half of 1% of what he did, you can still use their, their model to, to help you along the way, right? It's one of the reasons why I call my companies, you know, Todd McFarland Productions and McFarland Toys, because I go, what? Disney, Disney called it Disneyland, right? So, you know, Turner called it Turner Broadcasting. You know, Donald mm -hmm. Trump calls it the Trump Tower, right? I mean, it seems to work for branding. I don't know, you know? So I, I guess I could have called it peaches and, and, and milk. I don't know, but it's like, <laughs> what the heck? Uh, so for, for me, I'm hoping that I, I sort of eventually take my last breath and people go, eh, that's too bad, Todd's not here. I wonder, what, I wonder what's happening in Spawn next month. That would be... That would be a, a great, a great legacy to leave behind. Uh, and and ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, I, it was one of the reasons why you don't really want to come back. I might find that the people who take over some of my ideas may do ten times better than I ever did, and then people are gonna go, "Man, Todd should have died earlier," because then we could have got all to all that cool stuff sooner. So uh, because there's lots of good things happening in you know, past the life of Disney and Stanley. Uh, so I'm uh, hopefully some smart people come along and take some of my ideas and, and expand on them. Well, Todd, I think you've done a great job and, and your business, uh, your business ideas and everything are, are really something to look, uh, look up to because it's, uh, interesting how you, you know, your books and your toy lines. And it's just, it's really, uh, it's interesting. It's a really neat thing to see through the years how you started and where you are now. And, and I think what I might take away from one of the biggest things is I can take away from anything is um, business, especially, I think it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's yeah. that's, that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. But let, so let me be very clear on the business side of it though. I, 
taught myself business to be able to accommodate the art, right? And and mm-hmm. you have to have, I've said before, you you have to have a level of success so that they'll continue to allow you to do art, right? I mean, if I don't sell the comics, they're not putting my comics out. If I don't sell my toys, they're not going to give them shelf space, right? So if my characters don't create some success and revenue for others, then they don't give you the opportunity. This is why I need to have some of it. But the difference would the difference for me specifically uh, as to why I do the business isn't so that I can build a big company and then, you know, go public with it and do whatever else. Uh, and who knows in the next 30 years, whatever it's, it's so that I could create an apparatus so that I don't have to get a lot of people's approval. In some cases with my spawn book, zero people's approval, right? I can, mm-hmm. I can make money for myself that allows me to feed my family uh, and take care of my family. And I don't have to get any approval from anybody else to do it. I'm telling you, for a guy like me and my personality, that's, that's, uh, you don't even know how valuable that is because I, I'm not very coachable, <laughs> which is why I can't, I couldn't work for a corporation for very long because I just, I just don't have the personality. So I'm not doing business so that I can build an empire and make a gajillion dollars. I'm building what I'm doing so that it will be as bulletproof as possible so I can continue doing art until I choose either not to or I take my last breath. Those are the only two, those are the only two options. Oh, and by the way, last thing, if I ever do decide to quote unquote cash out at any point, it's going to be with the mindset of taking that money and trying to help others that are less fortunate. That's it. Like I, 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 my wife and I, we're happy with our lifestyle. We don't need to own a private island or own a fucking private jet. I don't. We don't need any of that. So, if at some point we just go, ah, we're getting too old. Let's just cash out. But if, if in return for that, somebody stacks a bunch of money on the table, the question is going to be, how many people can we help with this? There are so many people and so many causes that could use cash that helps get towards a goal that it would like, I don't know, it, it, it would, it would make me feel good. I mean, look, look at, I, I'm, I'm looking at a guy that I, I, I think is pretty inspirational to me. Bill Gates went and built Microsoft, put in decades to get there. And then he cashed out and he got multiple tens of billions of dollars. And then you know what he did with it? You know what he did with his cash? He didn't fucking buy a yacht and he didn't buy an island and he didn't make a spaceship that's going up into the moon. He basically said, I'm going to go to Africa and see if I can cure malaria. Hmm. I go, what? And he couldn't have done that without the cash. So he, so he, and whether that was his game plan all along, I don't know. I don't know the man. I'm just saying that after a certain amount of time, he said, you know what? I got $70 billion. Maybe I'll keep a billion for myself. Not a bad day. Not a bad day. And the other six nine billion, I'll just go and help the world, right? Good on that, dude. Right? Good on that, dude. So. That's good stuff, Todd. And it's it's uh, good to hear that because uh, where I live here in the East Coast, uh, um, five thousand in my state, five thousand homeless veterans, and it's sad. Over yeah. five thousand homeless veterans, and to to be able to do that and to to leave that kind of a mark, and not even about leaving the mark, but helping those people less fortunate. That's good to hear, Todd. That's nice, and and I want to uh, I want to give uh, give you uh, and your inspirational with your uh, marriage to your wife for so many years. My parents are coming up on fifty years, and uh, I unfortunately didn't draw that straw. The, the 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 I drew the short straw, and I ended up getting divorced, unfortunately. But yeah. uh, it's a big inspiration, and, and and congratulations to you and your wife because it's it's something to really. Uh, model of life after honestly yeah. that that long of a marriage is amazing yeah well hopefully I've, we got 30 more years so we can we can almost double it so uh we'll see we'll see where we'll see where it goes but we're we're having a good time with it so awesome yeah. thank you so much for your time Todd, and uh keep up the great work man and, and it's always a pleasure in here and thank you so much again it, it, i really look forward to seeing you in new york this year 
All right, you be good. All right. All right. I see, I see, Gabe, I see Gabe out there in the audience with his hand up. Look at that big bad Gabe. Maybe we'll get to you before it all ends up happening. What's going Massacre. on, Marvick Fly? I don't know. Hey, how you doing, John? Look at Massacre. I like that name, Massacre. Somebody in the audience <sighs> from Massacre. Yeah. Hey, dog. Oh, well, first of all, God bless. Um, especially that inspirational about giving out your money to the poor. I mean, me with five yeah. kids. I'm not quite there yet. Don't, like, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I, I, I got to, no. I got to build it so I can get the big payoff so that I can eventually do it. Cause I'm, that's it. I keep telling people, I, I don't give a shit about the money myself. And all I said, okay. when I, when I have business discussions, the first thing I tell the three piece suits, the thing that I'm the least interested in is the money. So let's not talk about that. Let's talk about everything else. But, but, at some point, I'm going to try and choke you guys for as much money as possible because at some point, the more money I can take away from the big guys, then the more I might be able to give to the little guy. A little bit, I mean, again. Robin Hood? A little bit Robin Hood. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It's like, it would be, to me, it would be a good feeling that I just, at the end of my life, just go, man, I just did stupid drawings. And so I had some fun time in the sun, but now... You know, I can I can build something that might help other people. And then here's the here's the thing about paying it forward, is that you hope mm -hmm. that somebody, if you can help, that they will then take that sort of success that they have, and then they'll do the same thing, right? And it just keeps going and going and going, right? And that and that people will say, shoot, somebody help me, I'll help somebody, I'll help somebody else. And then I mean, everybody keeps remember. So I mean that's why I try to teach my kids to try to be better than I am. But um you know, my my question is for you is actually is uh as a business opportunity is I know and I see a lot of independent sellers, especially like in whatnot, they grab artists and then they do like an independent cover, like they would do a cover for Marvel, yep. and then they re resell it yep. on their profile. Um do you actually do the same thing or nope. is there any nope. opportunity for someone to nope. do that? No, I don't nope. do, I don't, I don't do any of it. Uh, but okay. again, again, let me, let me just be clear. Not mm -hmm. because, not because I disagree with it. This, this is going back to the buffet. Just do it, do, do what you like. Right. I, mm -hmm. I understand. I understand that when I was younger, that every dollar mattered in my life. Right. Especially when I got married and then later when we started having children, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you, you have to pay rent, you have to feed your babies, like all of it matters. And so right now there are more opportunities for creative people, especially artists to in our industry to make side money uh, way more than was ever allotted to me. And if all those opportunities were there, when I was in my twenties and thirties, I would have done exactly the same thing that people are doing. My position now, and it's been there for quite some time, probably since the beginning of Swan, <laughs> was that I was making a good living. And so I stopped selling original artwork in 1992, right? I, I mm -hmm. own every single page of the Spawn comic book that I've ever drawn. I still, I still have every page and every cover. Um, and the reason I did that was because by the time I got to Image and Spawn, I had had enough success on Spider-Man that I didn't feel like I needed more money, right? Uh, I, was, I was okay. My wife and I have always lived oddly sort of the previous sort of promotion back behind. It's not a bad way to live, right? If you make 50000 mm -hmm. if your first job is... 30,000 and then you get a bump and they promote you and you make 50, we would still live at 30 because we didn't assume the 50 was going to stay. And then when it got bumped at 70, then we moved up to 50. We were always one behind where we were financially, right? We could have, we could have moved up to where we were making the money, but the, we were always like, well, what if it doesn't last? Right? So because of that, we were never sort of reaching for anything. We were quite content to where we were at. Um, but now as I get a little bit older and I see what's happening out there, as odd as it is, <laughs> the, 
the way to keep some of the value of what it is that I do is to actually continue to not do it. Right. Right. So that, right. so that when I do do a sketch and I don't do too many and somebody gets one and puts it up on eBay, it goes for a lot of money. Right. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at the, at the price that people pay for my Spider-Man pages, it's in the hundreds, sometimes multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars for those pages. Right. When I was selling those pages, I was selling them for a hundred, two hundred bucks, under two hundred bucks. How many pages would I have to sell to get to a hundred thousand? Right. So now, oddly, I'm like, man, if I want to leave <laughs> money to, to Jake, I don't even got to like worry about saving money. I just got to give him like five pages from Spawn issue number one. Right. Mm. Shit. Hey, good. You're good. Stop complaining. Um, and, and, and I can take care of my family pretty easily by just going, what? I got original artwork sort of hanging around. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Right. So mm -hmm. I, and, and once you, once you're sort of comfortable, uh, and I'm just talking on my behalf, once you're sort of right. comfortable with, with your lot in life and you don't, you don't require more, right. And I've got plenty of friends that are always need more. I'm, I'm, my wife and I have never been like that. Um, that you, I, I, I don't have to do a sub stack. I don't have to do a patron. I don't have to go to shows. I don't have to do commission drawings. I don't have to, I don't have to make the side hustles, um, which I would have done when I was 20 and 30. So again, I'm not saying they're bad. I would, I would have done it, but at this point in my career, I don't have to, if the option is, Oh, I could do something and make a thousand bucks or 500 bucks or I can spend two hours with my wife and not work. I'll spend two hours with my wife and not work, right? So mm -hmm. why? Because I'm good, right? And so now it's this odd place that I'm in where people go, oh, Todd, you want to come to Paris for a convention? I'm like, no, I can't. I don't, I don't want to leave my wife. And then you got to find more value with the money. Hmm. Yeah, right. And yeah. then, right, but now it's, now it's odder that, that, it's, that they're going, well, we'll bring your wife with you. I'm mm -hmm. like, uh, no, no, that's okay. No, no, no. We'll we'll give you some money and and put you in first class and all this other stuff. And it's like I don't. It's not that I don't appreciate the offers. It's that you know I, we've been fortunate enough, our family, that I now have enough money that I can just fly to Paris with my wife on my own, and I don't have to work at a convention for three days. Right? What am I going to do? Even if my wife comes, what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the to Paris and what? Tell her to do what for three days while I'm at the convention, right? What you, what you can mm -hmm. do stand stand by me and watch me shake hands for three days. Like it's not it's not very entertaining. So I'm now going to be in Paris with my wife, and I'm not spending time with her. It's like no, I'm I'm lucky enough now that I can go. Wanda, you want you want to go to Paris? Let's go. And oh by the way, I don't have to go to work once I get there. So I it, I know it's frustrating to people who put conventions on because they're like. You know, I get asked a lot, but I just, mm -hmm. I just go, I, I, I don't have, I don't have the need to want to go on other people's nickel because then you're obliged to do work for them. And I, I've saved my pennies. All right. I built my brick house early so that I've got my pennies that I can now go enjoy if I want to go to any of those places on my own and not have to do work. So I love, I, I like meeting the fans. But again, given that I'm a homebody and I'm lazy, this is the best way. <laughs> Look at me. I'm just sitting here. I'm laying on the floor right now, my feet up, and I'm getting to talk to, you know, all you people out there right now. Super cool, right? I mean, I didn't have to I didn't have to get on a plane and travel. You guys didn't have to get on a plane. We didn't have to rent a car. We didn't have to spend money on a hotel. We didn't have to buy convention tickets. And yet here we are having a chat with each other. Super cool. Uh oh. anyway. Well, thank you so much for your time, and thank right. you for doing this for the fans. Be good. Appreciate you, Marv, coming on up. Thank and you. we do have tons of people with their hands raised. We'll try to get it through as many as possible, but okay, let's I'm keep... Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get... Okay, so starting now, they're going to give their question, and I'm going to try and be concise and not... <laughs> not I, did, mouth. I didn't want right. to say it. I didn't want to, like... You could you, you take as much time as you want, but we got no, a lot of... We're going to do... We're gonna do we're going to do a little bit more rapid fire now. How about All right, that? speed answer, speed answers. Tapin, you, you got the floor, man. Go ahead. 
Okay, hello, Mr. Teep. I mean, Todd McFarlane. How are you doing? Hey, Mr. Teep, I was... Oh, me? Really good. You are the first artist that I ever met, and I'm a fan of your artwork. This is probably the greatest day of my life. What? Really oh, you. my goodness, just... Tapin is... Uh, he's been in chats for so long, super excited about the next MAMA, I just want to say. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. Mr. Todd McFarlane, I get an, uh, actually a ton of questions. Okay, First you get one. Is. You got one. You got one. You got one because we're going to do rapid fire right now. And then the next time I hey. do a panel, we'll bring you back up and you can ask some more. Is the animated series of Spawn coming back? Like you said back like a few years ago that if it, if the movie works, the animated series is going to come. That's this the, I, the, I, I, I'm going to stick to that same answer. I know, I know that the Spawn movie will open up the floodgates for the possibilities to everything else. So the 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 movie will come first and then the animation will come behind it. So yes, eventually I think we'll get there. Uh, I'll make it part of the pro the 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 contract. Uh but we'll we'll get there. But we gotta we gotta get the movie going. Yep. Okay. But just quick, McFarlane <laughs> and Tom's series, uh they're actually coming. Like the one that is the stop motion series, McFarland. Is it coming? Uh not right now. We've we've pitched it, oh. haven't been able to find the buyer. It's all developed, but haven't been able to find a buyer for it right now. The Hollywood is very conservative right now, and they got a potential writer strike coming down the pipeline here in the next few weeks. So uh we'll see we'll see where all that takes us. So the same with Tums, the series, actually the adaptation of that comic yep. with the same yep. name. Yeah, the same, same, okay, same, 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 same answer. Yep. All right, thanks. Okay. Appreciate you tapping you. coming up. Ipa Bud, you, you got the floor, man. Hey, I'm uh, hi there. Oh, uh, my answer to your question is no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Ipa. Oh. Oh. Uh, Hi, Todd. So a long time fan. Thanks for a uh, decade of the 90s, man. You really uh, made that work for us. And so, oh, man. Uh, I mean, you're an old guy here. That's cool. Well, coming from an old guy from the 90s, uh, my question, I'm a character collector at heart, and one of my favorite characters to collect is uh, from the X-Men, that's Gambit. And I was oh, yeah. curious if you ever drew him, uh, and if there's any published or unpublished illustrations of Gambit by Todd McFarlane out there. Um, off the top of my head, the answer actually is no. Um, I, I didn't really do, and still don't to this day, even from the very beginning, I didn't really do a lot of sketches. I was so concerned about meeting my deadlines that I felt every line I drew should be towards getting my next issue up. Uh, so I know I had lots of friends that did sketchbooks and commissions and went to shows. I was never that guy. Like I said, I just had my head down. I was doing the manual labor just like they were, except for I was doing it towards my comic books. So, um, no, I don't think so. I don't think I ever did any... any. The only X-Men I think I ever did was I did a couple of Marvel Tales covers that had some old X-Men on it with Spider-Man, and I think that was... And that's, you know, a little bit of Wolverine here and there, but th that's sort of the sum total of it. I don't think I ever got around to some of the newer characters. So, unfortunately, no. I appreciate the time. At least I'm not chasing the ghost out there. So, uh, thank you, Todd. All right, be good. Appreciate you. Uh, Jay Kill, you got the floor. Jay Kill. Jay Kill XRP. Mute. Hey, what's go. going on, everybody? What are you doing, dude? So, uh, Todd, uh, you were saying earlier it's best not to judge people's art, and I understand, like, uh, as long as they're trying and everything. So, that being said, I was wondering what your thoughts are, no, no, are I think, on the uh, I think also, I, what I'm saying is, don't judge what other people like as art, right? Like if you like collecting toys and somebody else like collecting comic books, it's they're both art. Who cares? Who cares what the medium is, right? Yeah, that's, I understand. That's, 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 that's all I was saying. Like just collect the art in the medium that you like. And because some people just go, I just like movies. I don't like anything else. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah. That's all. That's all. So that being said, like, what are your thoughts on this so-called woke agenda that seems to be forcing its way into the comic and movie world and turning some fans it's, away? I think, I think it's a con. I think it's a con. I think it's a con that people use that. So here's the thing about people trying to come up with bullshit excuses, 
as to why something works or doesn't work, right? So here's, here's, it goes all the way back. Fucking video games. Those are the worst. Kids are turning into deviants. Okay, that's an answer today. Okay, and when Columbine happened, that was today. What happened 100 years earlier when people were killing each other? There were no fucking video games, right? Here's the yep. thing about people. People are flawed, and people will do things that they probably should or shouldn't do. And oh, by the way, creating stories are basically built around ideas that each creator can come up with. And then it falls on the consumer to then sit there and decide whether they want to consume it or not. And that's it. And for somebody to sit there, I've listened to a couple of people sit there and say, one of the downfalls of comic books is the woke uh, uh, part of it. It's bullshit. I'm telling you, it's bullshit. You know why it's bullshit? First off, the person who's saying it hasn't done their homework. Based on what? Based on what? Well, it seems like some of the biggest flops in history just seem to happen recently with some of these okay. uh, so-called right. woke movies. Right, right. So, okay. So, so what's the data? You're telling me that when somebody did something that wasn't woke, that there's not a movie that made less money than that? Of course there is, right? Of course there is. Of course there is. Why try to assess why something didn't succeed? Either just consume it yourself and then go, cool, I liked it. I don't care if anybody else. Why do I give a shit if the movie I just watched yesterday, if anybody likes it? I got to tell you, big kill. I don't care. I don't care. All I right, just, well, it's good I, to have your input on it. I do. I do my thing. I, look at, here's the thing. Here's, here's, how, here's how boxed off I am on everything. I, I'm going to do a cover for uh, Spawn, and I'm going to put it out for public consumption. Right? I'm going to put it up on Instagram. I'm going to put it out on Twitter, Facebook. I'm going to put it out there. All right. Everybody, the, the, the cover's done. I'm not changing one single line on it. Everybody then sits there and says, oh, my God, Todd, I hate it. Okay. I don't care. I'm not changing a line. Okay, let's take the opposite. I put that same cover out there, and everybody looks at it, and they go, oh, my God, Todd, it's the best cover you've ever done. We love it. I don't care. I'm not going to change a line. This is the thing that is sort of odd to people. I don't put out my art looking for approval or criticism. I put it out as a, as a fact. This is the cover of the next issue. That yeah, well, you have the best art out there, though, so it works no, no, for no, you. No, 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 no. Anytime you do anything, J.K., in in the public, you're going to get both people who like and dislike, right? I I am just, for the most part, disinterested on either side of that equation. I I do my art, I put it out, and then I say, everybody in the world, there's the cover or whatever, there's the toy or there's the video game or there's the NFT or whatever you, where I'm doing. There's the movie, whatever it is. And now it's up to you to decide whether you want to consume it. And if you like it or you dislike it, that's not on me. That's, that's your interpretation of it. And you have a right to like and dislike whatever it is that you want. Because it's your life. I don't get to tell you one way. I, don't, I shouldn't justify whether you dislike something that I do or like it either way. I, I long ago just said, I'm going to just do art. I'm going to put it out into the world. And then I'm going to cross my fingers and hope enough people will consume it. Uh, and then I'll call myself lucky. Here's, here's the thing, Jacob. At the end of the day, if I sell 100,000 copies of a comic book, it's, really, it's a really good number in our industry, 100,000. There's over 8 billion people on this planet. All right, so I know yeah. math. I know mathematically, Jayco, that ninety nine, literally ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population don't consume my products, or don't know who I am, or don't care. But that's yeah. okay. That's okay. I'm still making a living because I I was able to find enough people who do, and this is the thing that's sort of fun about people who go on Etsy and people who go to shows, whatever, you don't need everybody in the world to like your stuff. You need just enough to make a living. And if you're lucky enough to be able to find just enough 
who cares about the rest? Who cares? And so I'm, I'm, I've, I've been able to make a good living. I don't need the whole world to like what I do. I just need enough of you. And luckily, there's been more than enough of you over the years. So I've been, I've been super fortunate. So, uh, and, and why people think something succeeded or failed, I like, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I don't really get in those conversations, even with Hollywood people. I just like guys. Just do you want to buy this idea or don't? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't want to hear anything in between. But thanks. Anyways. Thanks for taking my question, Todd. I appreciate it. Yeah, you'd be good, JQ. Yeah, I'm good. I'm collecting. I'm still collecting. I look forward to the uh, odd key uh, OCT drop and the doodles, the yeah. uh, sketches. The, they look so awesome. What we seen earlier, and uh, I can't wait for that drop. So I've been uh, stacking my OCT and uh, <laughs> preparation. So I'm ready. Oh well, good luck to you on Thursday. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, J. Kill. Uh, Gabriel L. Pro, you have the next question. And if you need some help translating, Jabizel's on stage to help you out. ¿Qué tal? Bienvenido, Gabriel. Puedes darle click a tu botón de para que te desmotes. El botón del microfonito que tienes ahí en tu pantalla. Ahí puedes hablar. Creo que no te podemos escuchar. Chécate en tu configuración. Mientras vamos a pasar. Uh, QT. If he's uh, unable to speak, we'll go on to QT. Yeah. Okay. Uh, perfect. Mientras, QT. Configuración nada más eh, en, en, en las configuraciones de, de audio. Por favor. Uh, are, go e ahead, are either members on stage able to speak? Hello. QT, go ahead. Take four. Hey, man. Uh, I know you talked to my grandpa Spence uh, the other day. I did. Oh, so, sorry, my throat is dying, so don't mind me. Uh, I'm getting over a sickness. Anyways, and uh, he let me know that uh, you had messaged him back, and uh, that was nice. So um, He wanted me to tell you that uh, he was. it was nice of you to message back and stuff, and oh. glad to be in contact again. And my question is... Okay, hold on. Let's just give a little context to what you just said, though, because it's not insignificant, I, I, I think. So your grandfather, Spence, and Spence's dad, which would be your great-grandfather. Marty, uh, yeah. Mar Marty, Marty. Uh, yeah. Carrie and Marty uh, were this cute, adorable couple that would you'd see at all the conventions. And Marty is was the one who created, as you can see, even in QT's uh, uh, avatar, created the original Green Lantern, the original Green Lantern, right? As a matter of fact, Marty also created, for some of you out there that are into brands, the Pillsbury Do Doughboy, right? That little funny little white guy where you used to push him in the belly button. So, and he goes, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. So I came across your great-grandfather at shows and just – found him to be an, a, 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 such an inspiration in that sometimes when you meet the really old, sort of the original comic book guys, right? There was only two, that you could almost put them in two buckets. One, they were just grumpy, and they just thought they got taken advantage of. And then there were those who just had a smile on their face. And, and your great-grandfather and his lovely bride, Carrot, uh, they, they just were like adorable couple and they never had a bad word to say about anybody <laughs> now um i remember that he said that he created green lantern and um was saying that he wasn't getting any money out of it and whatever else and i found that you know again we were doing image comics and i found that to be not very impressive yeah <laughs> so i ended up having the conversation with dc on marty's behalf you great fun and saying really? oh, yeah oh yeah and and negotiated a deal so that eventually yeah ended up giving him some money that, that was would, in the nineties yeah that would pass so when he passed away it would go to uh, your great grandmother and then after that I even think it went to your grandpa for a couple of years before. here's the thing here's the thing it never did oh really no I, I have, I have DC, DC never followed through with I'd have uh, to look at the original contract but anyways the, the, at least at least if nothing else I, and yeah. I'd have to go and take a look at 
but at least at the very end of their lives, that at least he got acknowledged as sort of the creator of Green Lantern. Well, world. they try to, they're trying to say, oh, well, Bill Finger had a part of it. I mean, sh sure, you can say yeah, he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, there's usually a writer and an artist. Uh -huh. Yeah, but he had, Marty had soul yeah. creation, right? He, you know, yeah. he was alone in a subway. <laughs> Right, I mean, but anyways, it was it was it was uh, a moment where it was like, oh my gosh, I'm meeting one of the grandmasters, and, the and grand we're masters. along the line. It was it was you know I, I I was in a fighting mood, so I was able to sort of help. Him. And more importantly, that uh, your great grandfather and your great grandmother, the house I'm at right now, they would they would pass through when they were going to convention and stop at the house, so they would come. My visit. grandpa Spence told me a funny story about how you. Something about orange juice. I don't remember what yeah, it was. Right. So, anyway, it's, all, it's always uh, fun. It's always fun. So, anyways, it was cool. It was cool that you reached out and I got to say hi to Spence. So, yeah. Um, I you What's your question? Oh, no. Well, I was going to originally ask um, if you did have any funny stories from, because since I've never, I've only heard from my grandpa, I've never heard from anyone else, you know? Uh, you ever seen movies of your great grandfather? Uh, like the films. Yeah. No, like, like, is there, I don't even know if I went on YouTube, but there'd be. Anything. Yeah, well, we also, yeah, um, we have some ones too. Yeah, I've seen them. Like, yeah, uh, you're some, yeah, you're some guy. You're just some guy. <laughs> and there was um, this funny one. Uh, you know, if you, you don't mind me they, saying real quick. You, you know what they reminded me of? What? I and and this may, don't take this wrong, but because it's a, they were the fun they were the fun couple version of it. But you remember in uh, if you ever saw the TV show the uh, Seinfeld. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. George Cost George Costanza had that those two old parents, those two funny old parents. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's essentially who your great great grandparents were, except for they always had a smile on the face and they weren't crabby. And I heard Marty uh, and I heard Carrie always uh, from my grandpa always said, "Marty, go get your crayons." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're good, they're good people. So too bad yeah. they're not here with us. So. Yeah, unfortunate. But yeah. I'm actually trying to preserve their uh, memory uh, via a website I do now. So yeah. it's it's pretty cool. Um, my, if you don't mind, I got one more thing. Uh, we got a lot of people, so let's keep it short. Yes, sir. Um, is there plans to ever do an Alan Scott figure? <laughs> yeah. Really. Yeah, we've got cool. we've got them on we've got them on the on the short list right now. So all right, yeah, cool. Well, nice talking, talking with you, and we'll see you again soon. All right, be good. Yep. Thanks, cutie. Fox Vader, go ahead and take the floor, man. I uh, am I am it's a pleasure to uh, meet you. Hey, thanks for coming. So uh, my question is: Is there uh, any possible chance that we're going to get a? Uh, Classic issue one spawn in the uh, spawns universe line. Uh, what what uh, I don't understand the question. What is it? What, what? Oh, um, for the uh, uh, toy line, is it possible that we're going to get a uh, classic spawn? Oh, you mean go back to like sort of the original look? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're talking. We're talking uh, about some of that. I just had actually a conversation last week about sort of dipping into the well and going back in time a little bit. Yes. All right, that's sweet. Sweet. Uh, so, uh, I got one last thing. Quick. Uh, so I got a like a big English test tomorrow. Any chance I can get a uh, like a a, a, a uh, good luck? Look at dude. If you, if you <laughs> all you gotta do is just take a deep breath and then talk from a point that you know, right? And if you all don't right. know. Then, then write and bullshit. And because if you can become a go good bullshitter, those are basically called writers. They make stuff up all day long and they get paid a lot of money. So, uh, yeah, good luck to you. Uh, and just and just write your ass off and make it sound convincing. All right, sweet. Thanks, Vox. Appreciate you coming up, man. All right, pleasure to meet you. Yep. All right, Gabriel, I, let's hope your mic is working. Go ahead and give it a check. Sí, se me escucha bien. Ya te escuchamos muy bien, Gabriel. Muchas gracias. Gabriel, uh, asking another Gabriel a few questions for you. Okay. Disculpen los problemas anteriores. Este... No te preocupes. Es preguntar a todos, Gabriel. 
Eh, sí, antes de todo me gustaría decir que es un honor poder permitirme que Todd McFarlane me pueda escuchar. Que, perdón, estoy emocionado. Claro, que, no te preocupes. Que he seguido su... su este, he leído cada uno, muy fan de su personaje, este, he leído Hellspawn, Kingspawn, he visto la película, la serie, y este, Perdón. Este. No te preocupes, ¿qué le quieres preguntar a Thor? Eh, bueno, puede ser más de una pregunta, ¿no? ¿Cómo, perdón? Puede ser una? más de una. Eh, sí, tiene que ser solo una por el momento, porque queremos darle más espacio a todos para que pregunten. Ah, bueno. bueno. Sí. Bueno, es de... ¿Cuál sería tu pregunta? Hey, uh, uh, Ram, is there a question? Sí. Ram, 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 as a side note, remind me, or get Jake to remind me, I just got a link to an interview in Spanish that Javi Fernandez did just a couple of days ago. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, like a, a YouTube 10-minute video yep. uh, on, on one of his TV channels. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, remind me to post it here so some of our Spanish-speaking people can sort of listen to Javi talk about. Yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll repeat you. Yeah, I can help you with that. I know what, what, what YouTube video is. Yeah, I think I know what, what it is. We, we can share it in here. Thanks. Is there a, was there a question from Gabriel Javizel? Uh, estaba por decir, uh, he, he's about to ask me the question, by the way. So, ¿qué, qué le quiero preguntar, Gabriel? Yeah, let's, let's get that question. Bueno, entre Gabriel. muchos de mis cómics favoritos de Spawn, está uh -huh. el, de, el de Kiss Everyone, ¿no? Este es donde Spawn mata a la... Este, uh -huh. yeah. Me gustaría saber de dónde se dio la inspiración de hacer así a Spawn, de, oh. de pequeño, okay. matando a todos. ¿De dónde salió eso? Okay. Perfecto. So, Mr. Todd, uh, Gabriel's question is uh, about the comic uh, Spawn Kills Everyone. How did you get the inspiration to do that comic? Because when you just want to sort of have as much fun as you can, what better way than to basically just come up with uh, any different way you think you can slaughter a character and put it down on a page, and people will basically have a little bit of a chuckle and laugh at it. So, um, and I made sure that in the first series, uh, the the only character that I devoted two pages to getting killed was uh, me. Everybody else got killed in one page, but my death took two pages. So I killed myself twice as bad as everybody else. So. <laughs> nice. Oh, let me stop very quick. Eh, eh, lo que nos dice todo es que si quieres divertirte con tu personaje que ya tienes de tu historieta principal, qué mejor manera de hacer con tu mismo personaje de una manera divertida, donde incluso hizo que lo matara todo en dos ocasiones. <risa> de donde él obtuvo la inspiración, simplemente quiso hacer algo divertido con su propio personaje y de ahí dijo, vamos a ver que Spawn mate a todos y que incluso lo mate a mil, lo cual le parece bastante divertido a todos. <risa> So yeah, f finally, uh, Gabriel says, Mr. Todd, that it's an honor to hear, uh, to hear you and have it been here with us. And he's been reading all your comics, seeing all your movies, and all the, the animation too. So he's pretty happy to be here with us and just sharing this moment. Oh, thank you. Okay. Muchas gracias, Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel, for coming up, man. I appreciate the question. Al Simmons, go ahead. You're next. We gotta, we'll get a few more to do, and I don't want to take up all of Todd's time. Go ahead, Al. Ooh, Al, you might, might not be working. Check your push to talk and check your input settings. In the meantime, Rick, take the floor. Y'all hear me? Well, Rick Flair, I go wondering where he was. I go, man, uh, he's usually everywhere, so he must be dead. Oh, uh, look, Todd, I'm in the back of the line tonight, man. It's a lot of people to get behind. Oh, man, here we go. <laughs> well, look, my, I'm going to keep my uh, question short. So yeah. I've always wondered, Todd, I know that Angela, you know, had the big lawsuit and all that kind of stuff. But do you ever see in the future maybe somehow doing like some kind of special thing where you guys can work something out to bring that character back? Or is that just a dead thing that just, bro, it's just one of the things that it'll just, it is what it is. Well, she, she's now uh, legally a Marvel character. Right. So, so it's not, it's not an issue about doing Angela. It's about, I don't, I don't. I don't have any rights to do any Marvel characters in my comic books and or my toys. 
So it's, it, it just, my guess would be, Rick, that if I ever got the license to be able to do the Marvel toys, then they would basically open up the entire vault and I could do whoever I wanted. Um, and and I, I don't know that I'd have her in the top, in my in my a bucket list because i think there's so many sort of characters have been around that have made their impact a lot more so i i think she's an interesting footnote in in uh, my history but if you said hey todd you could do marvel would i go to angela no i'd go to the hulk iron man and spider-man so okay well hey that wraps that up thank you man yep, good. thanks rick Woo, al i see your mic's working go ahead Hey guys, uh, it's been a while, Todd. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back up here. Sorry it's been so long. I was deployed all of last year, so I'm glad to be back and try to catch up uh, with all of you. So I had to kind of phone in a friend, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, who wants to be a millionaire? I'm trying to figure out a good question to ask the Todd father. So I, I, I enlisted my buddy Ken Spawn, and uh, we came up with a movie question. Do it. So, so let's see what we got here. Um, what are the plans with the Spawn movie? It, it, are we gonna see Spawn in costume, or is it gonna be Jamie Foxx as Al uh, in plain clothing, kind of like a a mystery? I heard it was kind of the. Like no, they're, no, they're, 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 we've, we've designed a bunch of cool visuals already, right? And so, we're, and then depending on what the final script looks like, we'll have to design some more. But uh, yeah, there's you're you're gonna see. I I I wouldn't call it necessarily you know an actor in a costume uh i'm hoping we can be a little more clever than that um that was my original idea we'll see right because we'll have a big time director on it um but uh i don't i don't think anybody envisions him you know just putting on a rubber suit and running around in it that you know given that we're we're shooting for an r-rated uh, uh movie that's going to be more sophisticated than that so uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll just look cool as shit, right? I mean, like I said, we've we've got lots and lots and lots of designs already on the table. Yeah. someday, someday when we get going, I'll be able to do my making of and show you all the stuff that we did literally years ago. Thank you for your answer, Todd. All right, be good. Thanks, Al, for coming up. Colby Jack, go ahead and take the floor. Hello, hello. Uh... Good to talk to you again. I um, met you down in San Diego Comic Con, along with a lot of other fans. Pretty great event. Um, yeah, good to see you. Good to see you again. And your piece of cheese, Colby. Yeah, Colby Jack cheese. Um, representing for all the cheeses out there, like Brie and um, I, yeah. I don't know what else, Swiss. <laughs> anyway, um, my question to you is, uh, what is the um, kind of selection process for uh, uh, picking out the covers? For these uh, collectible drops and um, just a tag team on that, what uh, uh, what do you collect any of these uh, the collectibles? Do you have like a stack of um, some of these uh, uh, NFTs yourself, or uh, what, what uh, you I think I think I have like one of each. Like again, I I, I didn't want to be one of these guys who whitelisted a bunch of them for friends and family, right? I mean, even even Jake, my son, who's part of it, it like he has to go out and open market and buy it. I just I, I don't want to be one of those guys, right? To just like, no, 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 I want to make it rare by buying a path of my own stuff or getting my friends to buy it. So uh, the process of it isn't isn't super super um, complicated or sophisticated. It's just we look at certain pieces of art and go, hey, would that be fun? to sort of be able to do a little bit of animation or would that look good just as a, a single shot or whatever? And then if we all sort of give a thumbs up and we go, yeah. And and ultimately, uh, Colby, there's hopefully dozens and dozens and dozens of them out there. And some of them might even be like, uh, like something that was from the interior also that was a meaningful interior shot, whether it was a splash page or a cliffhanger or something like that. So... Uh, there's, you know, people ask me the same thing. How do you pick your character or, how, you know, when I was doing the sports toys, how do you, how do you go through that? Uh, it, it's, it's just the same thing as people sitting around at a bar or, or at home with some friends in the backyard talking about their favorite shows and their favorite players. And, and you, and you just sort of come up with your list and you just do it right. We don't do a ton of focus groups or whatever else. Just, you just go, is it cool? Yeah. Okay. Let's go do it. Done. 
and it's it's that simple. I I've told people before, I'm I'm in the cool business, right? That's I deliver as much cool as I can, and I I don't overthink it. Well, well, they're certainly cool, and uh, I, yeah, I, I love seeing some of those covers animated. So uh, it, I, I love that you're doing it. I just didn't know if you had some like you know significant like emotional significant significance to some of these covers or you're picking because they. Well, sometimes we let we let the fans pick. You just go, hey, here's three. Which one do you guys like? Cool, let's go. So. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for that insight. Um, All right. Yeah. Perfect, Kobe. I appreciate you coming up. And Todd, quick question. I mean, we, we're getting more and more hands, so let me ask you this: How how many more questions would you like to take? How uh, how about? Because uh, my wife is actually sick right now, so I need to go check on her. Um, so uh, how about four more? Yeah. Four more questions. All right. Well, hopefully we can have you gone again soon, maybe before this uh, next cover drop, so we can fulfill the rest of these questions. But in the meantime, yeah. Black Terror, yeah, you have the floor. Whoever, whoever didn't get in. Then I don't know. There's no way you can actually. I'll uh, I'll take a screenshot so I can actually expedite oh, yeah. them. Oh well, yeah. So if you got if we don't get you, maybe we'll take a screenshot. So next time we'll go. Hey, here's the list. If you want yeah. to ask a question next time, we'll put you in the queue first. That'd be perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Let's do that. Black Terror. In the meantime, you got this question. Uh, yes. Sorry. Perfect. Uh, can you talk? Greetings. Yeah, I can. Greetings from the Netherlands, Todd. It's a pleasure talking to you. Oh, uh, thank you. I have. I have a question. Uh, since you obviously, otherwise I would be here. But uh, my question is: since you were talking about uh, how the movie, when it drops, would be the pathway towards animation, I have something related to that I wanted to ask. Sure. Uh, as you're aware, the last time Spawn was featured in a video game was as a DLC fighter in the video game Mortal Kombat 11. He's Correct. my main, by the way. Great, great, nice character. But my question around that is, do you have any plans or ambition to have Spawn in any form of video game again, as perhaps another time as a DLC fighter or in a brand new Spawn video game or even perhaps an Armageddon remaster, something like that? Uh, the answer is yes. And by coincidence, I just signed off on it today. So oh, Oh, that's uh, yeah. Well, the homies will love this quest, this answer because yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah. So I, I obviously I'm not, I'm not, in, you know, I can't say anything at this point. But uh, it's a, it's a huge game. So uh, I think when we do go public with it, hopefully everybody will be like, oh my god, Spawn's gonna be in that game. That's super awesome. Todd, sir, I have to sleep soon. How can I sleep with this news? Like, my, my, my adrenaline, yeah. I can't do this. Uh, yeah, I don't know when they... I think, in all honesty, when I was talking to them, they think they said they might want to make the announcement at uh, San Diego. Uh, and then if not, then they might hold it till, um, till uh, New, uh, New York Comic Con. So, but... Anyway, because they got to develop it, as you can imagine, they got to develop mm -hmm. it, make it, and get it ready. Um, but, uh, I'll I'll make sure that it, once we get closer, that we we let everybody know that a major announcement's coming for that. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And just one one thing, please, hammer down on the cape. In Armageddon, he almost had no cape. In Soul Calibur, he did not have a cape. Spawn yeah. needs a cape. I'm sure you agree. Like Spawn has the cape. Forget Batman's. Yeah. Superman stores spawn has like the cape. Yeah, there, there's 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 usually a good reason for it. Depending yeah, I'm aware. On, the, depending on the games, there's either limitations or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in different games you also have, um, uh, you know, let's say if you're doing a first person shooter or something like that, you know, sometimes the cape cape is part of the hit radius or whatever. So I don't know. I I usually. I usually let whoever the people are that are doing it uh, know their audience better uh, and play to their audience instead of instead of worrying about making it completely accurate to the comic book, right? I want I want mm -hmm. somebody I want somebody in Portugal to who's never seen Spawn before to go, man, that's the coolest guy in my video game. So that's it. yeah, perf yeah, I get the reasoning, and also I should give it uh, more sympathy considering. Armageddon was like 2002, like yeah. the graph, it, I don't think it was really developed, but like if you look at Mortal Kombat 11, like that cape is 
really alive. It's flowing. It's gorgeous. And I'm sure you're pretty happy with the work they did. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I, 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 I assume that all these people who have these giant audiences and the developers know their audience. And so my goal was to just make them as cool as possible in the confines of their game. Right. Not, yeah. not saying, Hey, you got to do it my way. Just make them cool within the confines of your mm -hmm. game. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Then, uh, yeah, then I will leave you be. Uh, thank you for asking the question, and uh, God bless you, sir. Okay. Thanks, Tara, for coming up. Appreciate you. Anish, uh, third to last question? Shoot. Cool. Thank you guys so much for uh, having me. Todd, it's so dope to be able to um, talk to you and, uh, you know, ask you these questions and everything. Yeah. Um, appreciate so you my question was... Appreciate you having your hand up for so long. It's been so <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while. Um, So my question was... Um, like on the toy side of things, how um quick, like when you guys come up with an idea, say you're in a boardroom, um coming up with uh plans for whatever figure, whatever character you guys plan on releasing, how um fast is a process from when you guys come up with idea to make the character to the prototype to um promotional shots and actually releasing it? Yeah, the uh, the general answer is between eight and 12 months with the average being around 10. So from the time we say, Hey, we want to make this character to, and I'm talking about 10 months from the time we say, we're going to make this character. Let's go to the time that you can buy it. Right. So that, I mean, it's inclusive of sculpting and painting and manufacturing and shipping it over here and getting it on the store shelves, all that inclusive is about a 10 month process. So, yeah, it's not there. Unfortunately, it's not like making hats and t-shirts. I can't, I can't <laughs> do it over, over a weekend. It takes a long, long time. So yeah, it's uh, it's, sort yeah. Of, it's sort of the downside of, uh, of toys that it takes a long time for that cake to bake. Yeah, it, it definitely shows, um, in the end product that you guys definitely take your time and, um, yeah, I think it's true for most toy companies. That's <laughs> that's sort of. I mean, you, can you get it? You can. We we've done it way faster than that. But again, you start to compromise some things. But that's you mm -hmm. know, that's sort of the general. I you know, if some if we get a license and we announce it, then usually we're you know when you see when we're talking about coming out, it's usually within that same year, right? Which is that ten month range. So. Okay. Thank you. Right, cool. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anish. We got two more questions left. I know there's a bunch of hands, but there will be more of these in the future. No skull. Go ahead. Hey, can you guys hear me? Do it. Awesome. Hey, Todd. It's awesome to talk to you, man. Freaking love you, dude. Yeah, uh, let's talk. You. Let's uh, the quite just more of a question for the uh, distribution side of things. Uh, first off, you know I'm a fan of your comics and your toys. Um, distribution. Do you do you plan on sticking with the brick and mortar? Um, throughout the uh, the rest of you know, and so long as you can go, like when do you think you you'll swap to a different um, a different form of distribution as far as maybe like a loot box kind of thing? Um, yeah, here here's here's the thing that when you're making product, you are not the determinant as to how people consume it what you should be doing is asking after you come up with the idea and you build it, how, where are they? And, and where are they consuming it? Right. So there was a movie that came out years and years ago and I thought it, I, I, I don't, I don't agree with the premise. Uh, it was a baseball movie and it said, build it and they will come. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't agree with it. I, I, my, my theory is build it, find out where the people are and stand in front of them. Right. Because, if you just build it and then sit in your corner, you're making a big assumption that they even know you exist, right? It's, it's always on incumbent on me to make the product, let people know it exists, tell them where they can get it or how they can get it or ask them where they're shopping and then go to where they're shopping and do it. So I've always said, so let's use comic books. Right now we make comic books, we put them on paper and we put them in comic book shops and it's served everybody really well. If in 20 years, everybody wants to read comic books on the side of a blimp that flies around your city, 
I'll figure out how to get my stories on the side of a blimp. I'm not, I'm not beholden and or a slave to any process as long as it gets the, the art into their hands, right? So we used to watch movies by turning on the TV and then we had a VHS and then the VHS was a CD and then the CD now has become a download, right? So who cares what the delivery mechanism is as long as they're watching your movie, right? And so I, I sort of have the same attitude with everything that I, that, that I do. I, like if people want to buy online, God bless them. Eventually, eventually I'll get data that says that. If they want to buy it at brick and mortar, God bless them. Uh, Cause I'll get data. Like, so I, I, it's not for me to tell the consumers how to buy their product. It's for me to ask, where are you buying your product and see if I can then f- get my art to those places. So I don't know. Uh, check back with me in 10, 15 years. My guess is depending on, the time? depending on how the world shifted, uh, I, I may have to adapt or you become a dinosaur and you get a, you, you, you become extinct. So. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Be good. Appreciate you know, and Todd, I lied. There's actually the last two on stage, Dom and then Mr. Crinkle and we're done. So Dom, go ahead and take the floor. Hi, Todd. Uh, I'm 17 and an aspiring artist, and I self-published my first book recently. And uh, it's panels like this one that you and other artists do that motivate me to keep pushing myself. And I want to thank you for that. Um, yeah. I had a question about the early image days where everyone had studios like Extreme Studios, Wildstorm, Top Cow, and they would train talent and stuff. Yeah. And I was wondering if you had a studio like that too back then. And if not, why not? Uh, the answer is no, actually, if you look back at it, there was uh, six of us, right? And yeah. so th- three of them had a studio, Mark Silvestri and Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, they all had studios. And then Eric Larson, Jim Valentino, and I decided we were just going to do our own one book with our one character in it, right? So yeah. Eric, Eric did the Savage Dragon, I did Spawn, Jim Valentino did uh, Nighthawk, or Shadowhawk, excuse me. Um, and... It, it, it was just a personal choice by each of the six of us. You know, the others had so many ideas swimming in their head. Um, I, you know, both Jim Lee and Rob were doing team books, so they had all these ideas spinning in their head. Uh, but I felt, for me personally, I'm not saying it was right or wrong, I just wanted to do one character, and then I even made a promise to myself that I was going to do 50 issues, and then worry about doing any spinoffs or mini series or one shots or anything else, right? Because right. I I wanted to just plant that seed and see if I could water it and nurture it so that someday it might turn into an oak tree. Um, and and while the others were planting a lot of you know saplings all up and down, hoping that a couple of them would take would take root. I I, I and and I would argue that. Uh, Eric Larson did the exact same thing with Savage Dragon. He's got, you know, 250 issues too. So we just, I don't know, it just, I, I guess it's personality. We just said, no, we don't, we don't have an interest at that point of being a studio. You could argue today, I, I, I'm a MIDI studio because I've got now multiple books. So I've got lots of artists that work for me and writers and creative people and colors and letters. So I have a group of people, but um, I'm not, usually I'm not, necessarily training new new recruits i'm going out there and picking you know some of the people who have proven that that they can do monthly books and that their their skill is is conducive for what i need um but you know i i enjoy having conversations with creators i just had a this morning a two-hour conversation with uh rory uh mcconville who does the spawn writes the spawn we came up with some cool stuff leading up to issue 350 in, in the spawn. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I didn't have an interest in it. I just, I, I knew, I knew what my capabilities were in running a studio wasn't, wasn't that. I just wanted to come up with this new character spawn that I know seems weird 340 issues later that there, there was a time when there was no issues, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I, 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 I wanted to get the first couple issues out and, and, and make a mark with that. All right. Thank you for your time. Thanks for coming up, Dom. All right, Crinkle, last question of the night. Go ahead, my man. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, I had you muted. Go ahead. Sorry. I first off, I'd like to thank the guys that run this group. You guys are awesome. I appreciate the fact that we have this opportunity to talk to Todd. Yeah, they're good Second people. off, I'd like to thank Todd for hosting the uh, Calgary event that just happened. You you woke something up in me that had died long ago, so I appreciate that. And I'd also like to thank you for signing my son's poster, my Pearl, his Pearl Jam poster. He was over the moon with it. Oh, thank you. Um, my question for you is, do you intend on releasing more art prints as well as possibly working with Fight for Dreams again to do a gig print? Uh, no no plans in the, in the immediate future. Usually things like that sort of strike me randomly that I just go, man, wouldn't it be cool to do a print or a poster or something, you know? Uh, we were just talking about one maybe for San Diego Comic-Con. Um, I, I probably should do more because I used to like having posters in my in my room. Uh, but, you know, again... I'm always aware of not trying to milk every last penny I can out of my character and or more more importantly, out of the fan base. I think the fan base have been more than generous with their time and their kind words and their money towards me, my career, and my family for well over 35 years now. And I, I don't think it appropriate to take advantage of that, which is why I try to keep the toys low price. I try to keep the, you know, the comic books are two ninety nine, the lowest in the marketplace. Um, and so, could I do t shirts and hats and and uh, you know, uh, posters? And the answer is yes. I can do I can do anything. I'm in the manufacturing business. I'm in the art business. I but I I. Just because you can, I've said it plenty of times, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I, I'm not a public company, and so I am not obligated to maximize my profits every 90 days like a public company. Um, and so what I try to do is remember, I mean, I don't know where you're at, but if you came to the signing in Calgary, then I was in Calgary, and it's sort of where I fell in love with comic books. Um I, I I remember that 16-year-old Todd and just go, would I want this and would it and, how, and what could I afford and what would be reasonable? And I try to go from that uh, so that I'm not I'm not I'm not gouging or taking advantage of the people that have been so loyal to me. And and at times it's probably frustrating because people go, Todd, I'll buy one poster a year. It's not gouging. It's one poster a year or one every five years. You know, I haven't done one for five years. But I I, I don't know. I still I get a little bit nervous when I when I try to do things outside of what people are already doing. Um, it's why it's why when I started doing the NFT, my first question was when people were approaching me, I go, "Can I do a a five dollar NFT?" And they're like, "No, Todd, you can make all this money." I'm going, "I'm, I'm not I'm not asking that question. Can I can I do a five dollar one or whatever? Can we can we do?" I don't want to say cheap because that's not the right word, but can we do inexpensive product and give them a value for that inexpensive product, which is what I try to do in my other places. Uh, and I, I, I think, I think it's been part of the recipe to my success is that I think if you look at it, you'll see that I don't, I don't squeeze I don't squeeze things out of people. Could I do a Patreon? Sure, I could. Could I do a Substack? Sure, I could. Could I do commission? Sure, I could. I mean, and again, I understand why everybody's doing that because they're not in my position. But I just early on just said, no, Todd, no. Just be reasonable, be fair-minded. And if you're fair-minded and you're loyal to them, then hopefully they'll be loyal back to you. And here I am, you know, talking to a bunch of you 30 years later. So somewhere along the line, some of it worked. I, I definitely respect the fact that you've always wanted to make your art affordable and accessible. I, I, I absolutely dig that. If I could just ask one more side note. Yeah. If you could make a poster for any band, who would it be? Yeah, it's a weird one. I, I was an odd kid that I didn't, really, I, didn't, I didn't really listen and go to concerts when I was a kid. 
my my brothers had all the albums so i'd listen to theirs but i was I, you know i was poor and so i'm like I, I can't afford to collect albums i can't afford to to go to concerts and spend money on that's why i've said before i didn't i don't drink and drug never did because i couldn't afford vices right so my vice was, was comic books and i and so the little money that i did have i spent it on comic books and art supplies uh and then some baseball cards but uh that was that was sort of my thing so um i i i just sort of look at all music as art and appreciate all of it especially people who can make a living at it because i know how hard it is to do that you know i just got a phone call the other day from somebody you know that wants me to do some more video music video stuff so i'm going to have a conversation on friday about that so I don't know. Some opportunities just sort of knock, and sometimes I I open the door and say yes to it, and other times it doesn't work out. But uh, it's it's been a good ride so far, and uh, if all stops tomorrow, I'll I'll be I'll be more than content that my 15 minutes of fame lasted way 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 longer than it should have. I appreciate your time today, Todd. I hope you have a great rest of your night. I hope your wife is feeling better. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's been two weeks she's been down. So she's usually I call her Wanda woman. She's like the strongest woman I want. She's never been sick more than two days, and I've been two weeks. I have a I have a toddler in daycare. I know what it's like to get oh. sick all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not good. It's not good. I've never seen her like this. So anyway. But I appreciate I appreciate the I hope she recovers. Yeah, appreciate the kind of work. Have a great rest of your night, Todd. Yeah, you too. All right, all everybody. Right. I appreciate everybody showing up. We'll take a screenshot. We'll do this again. If we didn't get to your question, then we'll make sure that if you come back, we'll try and figure out at least most of you to cut in line up up front uh, next time. But uh, thanks for spending your evening with me uh, and uh, appreciate all the support over the years. Hopefully we'll talk. We'll talk soon. Yep, I just want to remind everybody, uh, we do these cafes with more than just Todd. We have other artists on as well, so definitely come around. and just pick the brains of all these sorts of artists. We got Todd's original drop coming up on Thursday, his first original NFT drop. So definitely be looking out for that. And I appreciate everyone being here. Thanks guys. Bye everybody.